I might have a, I might have a, I might have a surprise guest. Do you have a, who's that, Breon? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, all right, cool. I'm not going to tell you. First, let me say what's up. First, let me say what's up, guys. It won't be a surprise if I tell you. That's true. That's true. Let me say what's up, everybody, and especially what's ha what's happening, Mr. Tony. Man, it's been years. I know, man. What's up? I don't think I saw you at the Olympia. No, I didn't see you. Yeah, no, I, I, I was there, but um, that was the first time being back in the presence of all the greats. I tell you this: the last time where I did, I didn't see you, but I missed you. Was in Australia a few years ago. Yeah. Somebody told me you at the expo. I was. And, you know, and I walked around, but I never saw you, but I knew you were there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, so, it's been so, a minute for me and you. Yeah, what you been up to, man? What's going on? Um, just, you know, business. Um, trying to stay, be healthy, stay healthy. Yeah. Um, I'm in the wellness industry, um, of course. And um, so I'm just having fun doing that. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do in the wellness industry? Um, I got like a pretty decent following. Um, you see the little thing in the background. Um, so when I left the sport, I had a lot of issues and I had to correct those issues. Okay. And, what, what, what are we talking? Um, man, I had, I had parasites. I had, um, my left kidney had a parasite and it was really weak. And, um, I had, uh, flukes in my liver. My blood was dirty. You know, all those meals you eat, all the things that we do. It's funny. Um, and I was doing I was doing tons of cleansing, too, so I can only imagine if I didn't know about colonics and all that, how crazy it would have been. But, you know, eating all those meals, you know, I did a lot of shows back to back to back. And um, it just, you know, just catches up with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that as you say that because you were the one that was the most cautious and doing, like you said, all the colonics and all that stuff. So I would, you know, yeah. but, you know, it's it, it, listen, it can get anybody. So when you, the way you get parasites is, you know, a lot of people think, you know, only happens in third world countries and all that, which it pretty much happens everywhere. It's basically a parasite is a microbiome. They're friendly and unfriendly. So you, you know, depending on your environment, you know, we done been all over the world. So you just never know when you pick something up. I mean, huh? I've done all kind of crazy photo shoots. Uh -huh. um, and so I think I got a few of them, you know, I was, I did a photo shoot like a, like a green beret type of photo shoot, and I was down in this ditch with water in it. I'm pretty sure I got a parasite from there. Just knowing, you know, how they um, go from one place to another. So, how how oh, did wow. you how did you how did you detect them though? How did you find out? Oh, so that's that's the crazy part. You know, um, doing what we do, you have to be in tune with your body. And um, I remember my last Arnold. Um, you know, we do what we do to dry out, and I took like I don't know, a third of of a diazide. I used to take them and divide them in three. And took a third and I peed like 22 times. I was like, something, something's not right. So that kind of sent something off in my head. Well, at the time I was injured. And so after the show, I went to a natural path and they do muscle testing and a lot of other tests. But muscle testing can tell you, um, you know, that you actually have one, but it can't tell you what kind. And then a, a few months later, um, I met this guy. He had a machine called a, a Metatron. So it's like a bioimpedance, um, it's artificial intelligence. So it scans your whole being all the way down to your mitochondria and tells you, I mean, it told, he was asking me, so you've been here, you've been there. He was telling me everywhere I've been in the world. I'm like, how the hell you know that? And so anyway, it, it, uh, I told him, I said, well, scan my kidney. And he scanned my kidney. And I said, somebody told me I had a parasite. And so it does like a total 3D scan of your whole body. And when it went to my kidney, um, it, I, it showed like a little black spot and then he clicked on it and then it said, you know, whatever the name of the parasite is, some long word. And then, you know, it's a kidney worm, basically. And, it, and then you click on it again and tell you how you get it. And um, it says from eating raw fish, raw seafood. Well, at the time I was dieting and I was eating eight to 12 ounces of raw tuna every single day for like six months straight. So. I, w I couldn't even get mad. I was like, well, that's exactly how that's you get them. Crazy. <laughs> and so, so then I started trying to figure out, well, how do you get rid of them? And because it's an animal parasite, it's not even a human parasite. So if you went to go get tested with blood tests or the normal test, it wouldn't even show up. They would have to do a zoology test or that machine that I use. And um, so you start Googling, you know, how you get rid of it and all that. And, and so it's either kill the worm or take the kidney. And I was like, well, shoot, my kidney is fine. Let me just get rid of the worm. So then you start, <laughs> there's, so there's no, like, prescription. Uh, well, I found out now there are, but but there's, they're, like, 
um, what do you call it, um, alternative use. But anyway, uh, long story short, because I was done competing, I wanted to heal my body anyway. So I just went on this whole trek. I kind of did a 180. I went on this whole trek of just wanted to be healthy and, um, you know, live to see my kids have kids and grandkids. So mm. um, in that process, I learned about fasting and cleansing and herbs and all that type of stuff. And then uh, using other trying to frequency treatments and stuff like that. And that's how I ended up um, killing the worm. I actually saw it come out of my body. It's pretty crazy. Oh, wow. wow. Was that the reason for you retiring? <laughs> Say that again. Was that the reason for you retiring from competition? Um, no, bro. I got last place in that last Arnold that I did. I'm 49 and a half. I was going to retire at 50. That was my goal. Mm. And um, I'm 49 and a half. I did the Poland show, got fourth. And then the Arnold, I ended up getting 12th or last place or whatever it was. And I was injured. So I, 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 um, I ruptured some fascia in, my, in the side of my leg, my, between my hamstring and my quad getting i was getting rolfing done i had a bunch of scar tissue um from over the years and so this guy was doing rolfing and it was working but i guess he just got too rough for ralph and uh it it, it um ruptured the fascia and my and my left leg is full up like right in the beginning of my prep and um so i was doing cryotherapy every every day or every other day to keep the swelling down and then i, I went to poland competed came back to do the arnold and like i told you i took that a little bit of diuretic and and just dried myself and so when the injury got dry it just stiffened up and i couldn't couldn't walk um i remember that night i wanted to go to dinner but i couldn't even stand up so i just basically laid there and just kind of contemplated i fell asleep i woke up still in my in my sweatsuit with my number on and my clothes and trunks and everything mm. and i was like man i can't go to australia i can't continue there's something going on i could just feel it and um you know like i said i found out that i was um, I had been, I had been, um, before I actually found out. So after the show, you know, I, got, I went off my diet, started just eating everything and I was craving gummy worms. Now I like gummy worms, but I had like an issue to where my <laughs> son was like, yo man, you need an intervention. Cause I had him like in all my drawers and in the everywhere come to find out I was deficient in, um, of a lot of the nutrients that you need for connective tissue. So my injury, my body was like consuming um, more collagen than I was taking in just to try to heal that, that injury. It ended up calcifying crazy long story, but, um, I just went through those phases of, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, I had, you know, seven or eight ways to make money when I was competing and they all went away slowly, but surely. And so I said, I, got, I have to reinvent myself. I said, but first I want to be healthy. And so I just went on this whole wellness trek and mm. anti-aging and all that. And, um, you know, the stuff I was already doing, Except for when I was doing it in, in the sport, I was putting as much garbage in um, as I was taking out. You know what I'm saying? So now that I, I don't do any of any of those things, um, you know, now I'm actually probably healthier than I've ever been as far as, you know, blood work and all that type of stuff goes. Yeah. So, but you said before wow, that, that you can't detect it in the blood work. So that means nobody would know unless they do the tests that you were talking about. Yeah. So if you, if you, you know, we all love sushi. And so if you eat sushi... You realize the reason why they give you ginger is... <laughs> me, I can see. I can see. I can see. Yeah, I understand. I see Milos is, is listening, right? Because he loves sushi. <laughs> so the reason why they give you... The reason why they give you the ginger and the wasabi is to, to kill the parasite. Right? That, I know so, that. The, the, yeah, yeah, so that's the reason why they give it to you. So it's, it's... I mean, you... But you have to understand, you know, when you when you were born, you were a perfect human specimen. You had very little microbiome. You were you were like ninety percent human and ten percent microbiome. Your mother gave you some microbiome, and as over the years you collected more and more and more. By the time you die, you're going to be ten percent human and ninety percent microbiome. So the a lot of the stuff we pick up, we don't even know we pick it up. It, it, so you ever heard of set in your ways? You know that old terminology. A lot of those people who are set in their ways is because they they picked up some parasite when they were a kid. And it's like controlling their thought process, the way they eat, the way they look and think and all that type of stuff. It's crazy, bro. Mm. It's, crazy. It's, some, it's scary, but it's not really scary once you really understand that it's, it's nature. But there's so many extra environmental toxins that we don't understand. You know, we're all old enough to remember when we didn't have cell phones. That's a whole nother form of toxic toxification that we didn't even have 
you know, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Mm. So it's, it's crazy. True that. Milos, you have So you tell me you didn't have no, no wasabi and no uh, ginger the whole time you was eating all the... Well, see, I wasn't eating it at the sushi restaurant. I was just eating it at home. And I didn't know, I mean, I know about parasites, but I mean, we, we never think it could happen to us. So I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking. So the thing, when you, when you get sushi, I was getting that really high grade sushi block frozen, you know, it was great. And then, but then, you know, I'm, I'm a bodybuilder. So I always know that there's levels to everything. So I searched on the internet one day and I found fresh tuna. Basically they caught it yesterday, um, filleted it, put it in the FedEx and sent it to you. So I was eating like it was swimming two days ago. So you, it didn't go through a freeze that would possibly kill the parasite. So if it was some in there, you know, I, and that's how I end up getting, I know for a fact, pretty much that's how it happened. So, you know, the stuff that you get at the sushi restaurant, I mean, they scan it for all that stuff, but you know, I just was getting a three pound block of fresh tuna thinking the fresher, the better. And pretty much that's what did me in. Yeah. Hey, can I jump into sense. the tuna story? Go ahead. Dennis. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I told you, but okay, here's the... Hi, Tony. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you look super healthy. I, I do want to say you look young and healthy, so I commend you. But you were known with uh, all this cryotherapy, colonics, uh, uh, red light, uh, saunas, and all that yeah. stuff. So I, I, I start doing you. colonics because of Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, but listen, uh, and, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Tony and uh, uh, Chris, do you know how much actually tuna can cost yeah. do you do you believe that uh, uh one tuna can be three million dollars yeah i watch i, I watch had, uh, wicked tuna all the time yeah but i had no idea so listen uh <laughs> my now good friend and uh, and my training partner hunter campbell ufc chief business officer invites me for dinner and i go there and this uh waiter is bringing a dish called $3 million tuna. So I just thought it's a $3 million, you know, it's a name. Just like you go to Salmon Killer, Sex on the Beach, or whatever. <laughs> the sushi places have a stupid name, right? Yeah. So it's okay, $3 million tuna, like a you know, nice name, right? And I'm like inhaling it like I'm at uh, All You Can Eat Sushi. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I even you know, tell you, hey, wait there, can you can you bring me more of that $5 million tuna? Because I'm just like exaggerating because there is no way that this could be, right? I came home and I told my wife, like, you yeah, know, what a stupid name for sushi. You know, she goes, it's not the name. It's a trimming on tuna. I said, what? So I Googled it, and sure it is. <laughs> so I was like, imagine how stupid I look. I mean, like, oh, my God, I had to call him and apologize. But yeah, this, this is as far as He was eating but, tuna worth $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he obviously didn't pay the bill. You didn't get the yeah, bill. Yeah, I know, but, uh, but this is so embarrassing. Oh, my God. So embarrassing. I, I end up being just like a village person as opposed to stay in the village. But, but Tony, yeah, I understand that um, you placed uh, disappointing 12 to whatever that I'm classic. But you were always on, and one thing that strikes me always, your words when you were just asking judges, stand me next to him, stand me next to Ronnie, right? You know, for people to realize just how good you are. And uh, uh, I, I think that uh, Chris and, and uh, Dennis are going to confirm you're one of those old school, beautiful physiques with enough muscle mass to stand next to Ronnie and Chris and Kevin and everybody else. You know, so 49, yeah, it sounds like, um, yeah, you shouldn't be competing. But then again, look at Dexter, right? Look at uh, Vince Taylor. Uh, first year I competed, I competed against Albert Bettis, who was legitimately uh, 61 years old. He was 1930. And in 91, he was 61 years old when he beat us all in uh, Niagara Falls. You know, so I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of bummed that you stopped uh, competing because... Uh, I'm sure that we're all fans of your physique. You have that uh, super small waist and just shape. Everything was there. So one, you know, bad placing. You, <laughs> hey, I don't you know. know. Tony was famous. Well, Tony was famous. Like everybody's talking about me and my fucking gym pictures. I was Mr. Jim on Olympia. Tony was famous for the best bathroom shots ever. Ever. He has <laughs> he had some he had some shots in his bathroom and scared the hell out of everybody. 
That was so crazy because that was, I won't say it was an accident, but it was, um, I was sending, um, you know, progress pictures and, and I was kind of lazy. So I get up in the morning and that was my bathroom because I get up and make my coffee or whatever. So, you know, I just go in there and just take the picture. Well, you know, the iPhone, you know, I had just got my iPhone really. And I was just like, well, damn. And, but it was me taking a picture of myself in the mirror. And um, I don't know, it just looked freaky, especially when I, I really started honing in on how to get in condition and be full at the same time. So it was always the diuretics that messed me up. I, I mean, I could never get that just right because being so tall, it's just really hard to nail. But um, there was some times where, man, I walked past the mirror and was like, well, damn, because I knew I wasn't eating no carbs. I knew I was like, you know, less than 100 grams of carbs. And I was so full from eating all those healthy fats. And just the way that I trained, I was doing really high volume, kind of like Milos, not as crazy as Milos. I, I don't, that was, that's insane, but just that, that type of training, the stuff Dennis that you used to take me through, mm. you know, just doing that type of stuff. It allows you to be round and full if you, if you get your nutrients the right way. So. Did anybody yeah, follow Tony. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, Tony. You... Um, let me throw up the X first. What's up, baby? Of course. Of course. How you been? Good. Uh, I mean, yeah, come so on, man. I just wanted to ask you, like, you know, you started bodybuilding. Uh, what year? What was it? Uh, 88, 89. My first show was 89. Yeah. Okay. So you, you had a, a stint of competition that you, that you put together a few years, but then you stopped and then you uh, were slowly coming back into the sport. I remember you started coming up to Venice and um, I prepared, you know, for the Ironman and stuff. We was playing video games together. Uh, we had a good rapport with each other, uh, hung out a lot of times and stuff. But what, what uh, can you take us through the process of in the in the information about on you that you came, you competed, you injured yourself, you didn't think you'd be able to continue bodybuilding, but then uh, Doc that uh, helped you out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you was able to revamp yourself, revamp your, your career, and also uh, get on a, a, a mean track of, you know, start kicking some ass later on in life, finding out different ways you needed to improve your body and you did it. So can you take us through that process? Yeah, you know how they say history repeats itself? Um, so it doesn't repeat itself, but it definitely rhymes. So in 88, when I first went to the gym, there was a guy that I met and he told me because I was so tall and skinny, you know, don't, don't try it. Don't quit your day job. Right. So that guy inspired me to train. And then when I tore my pec and I took five years off and I said, I was going to go back and do the nationals, that same dude was like, man, you can't, you, you ain't trained in five years. You can't go back. And he is, <laughs> he inspired me again. So I had to give him credit for knowing what button to push with me, even though he may or may not knew, knew that to make me say, okay, I know how to do it. So let me just do it. And I had to reinvent myself so many times in my life. I mean, even after I finished. And so the mentality is what you need to do what we do. And so I just started, you know, getting small wins. I got my weight back up to like 275, 280. Cause he said, well, train for six weeks first before you commit to doing the show. I said, okay, cool. And he tried to kill me. And uh, cause he was training me. And um, so six weeks later, he was like, yeah, you probably can do it. And that year I got eighth place. And when I got eighth place after being gone for five years, I was like, well, shit, I ain't even really fell off that much. Um, Cause I didn't really train for five years. And then I died it for 13 weeks. I remember yeah. to qualify for the nationals. I, I did a show, rope man show. It was um, the Atlantic or whatever. And it was like four dudes in the class. And I got second. I had, uh, remember the doc in, in Louisiana? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So he did my surgery, right? And um, because yeah. I wasn't gonna get back on stage with all, all that gyno or whatever. So anyway, I peeled the but the butterflies off and went out on stage <laughs> and went out on stage. I had only been training like I only oh, just a few weeks. I looked like crap, but I ended up getting second place. And then I did the nationals, got eighth. And then that next year I started in January, getting ready for the nationals in November, and that's when I won my pro card. And then as soon as I turned pro. And, you know, all the all the writers was like, this dude is too tall, too skinny. He'll never be a good pro. He got to be 300 pounds. And then, you know, then I, you know, I, I ended up signing. Uh, I won't say with the wrong sponsor, but 
a sponsor that wasn't into the IFBB or the sport or nothing like that. And so I had a few right. years where I had, you know, bumped my head, you know, trying to learn the ropes and all of that. And then in 06, I finally um, brought something to the stage that made people pay attention. Um, and then, you know, won the Europa. And, um, and at that point, you know, people started saying, oh, Tony, you know, he has potential. And then I think um, I just kind of got lost mentally because, you know, you know how we get, we get, we start feeling ourselves. And so I think, you know, I needed to be humbled again. And so I got humbled in 07. Um, but I really, got, I got sick at that show, o overdid it with the, with the directs again. And, um, you know, ended up, I think I got 14th or 15th. And then, that, then I lost my sponsorship right after that show. And so I was like, you know what? Right. I'm gonna do every show until I get this shit right. So the next year I started my diet in like November and um, I did, I think I did 11 shows that year in, in 08 and um, I ended up placing top five. And, you know, after that, I signed with Muscle Tech and I started learning how to be a pro because I think I, I really wasn't doing it right. Um, I started really practicing my posing, um, my posing routines and my performance and my, and my, ex, my, my image and all that type of stuff to, to you know, draw people. And um, so that's. And you took my belly roll, I see. Of course. I mean, I spent so much time with you, Chris. You, you guys got to realize how much of a fan. Okay, so Milos, I met you in 93 at the Olympia. Back in the yeah. I won't bring up your girl, but I met y'all in the gym at, at, uh, at um, what was it, um, main event fitness down in the basement. Yeah. And then, you know, um, Chris, I met you uh, at the 92 when you won. I actually met you before that, but that's what me and you, like, had this little, we were alike a lot in my, in my mind, as far as the shape and all that. And I'll right. the way you right, pose right. and all right. that. You know, I stole a couple of more of your poses, but the belly roll was the most. Oh, yeah, I know you did. I you saw you up there. <laughs> and then you DJ, it, I, so I, I, remember, I remember when DJ came on the scene, um, that's when that really full hardness, that, you know what I'm saying, that upper body mass, which I, I really didn't have the ability to get after I tore my pec. I was just trying to be balanced at that point. And um, so, you know, I had, I was fans of all you guys and all the rest. And in so as I started getting older, because I turned pro at 36, as I started getting older, I realized that the, the key to this sport is longevity, you know, Sean and, and Dexter and all. So I just wanted to be healthy because, and I started trying to bodybuild on a cellular level because I knew that that would make me a better bodybuilder because whatever you do, if you're healthy on a cellular level, then you're just going to perform better and all that. And I really got into it and I, I partnered up with a couple of clinics and started doing all that crazy shit that I learned how to do over those years. And it just made me better. I mean, when I was 43, 44, my biological age was under 30, 28, 29. Um, because of the, the way I was eating and the way that I was doing, you know, it was, you got to do what you got to do to look like that. You know what I'm saying? I never have shied away from, you know, I, I never, I kind of had a little temperance just because of the way I was raised. And so I did the amount that worked. I never tried to see, well, if I did this, I mean, if I do more, you know, so I was yeah. always trying to maintain Meals. my... my let, let me, yeah, let me, let me jump in here because uh, this is perfect topic for us. Listen, here is uh, 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 Chris Cormier that did 72 pro shows just like myself. You, Tony, did about 70 shows yourself. Yeah, I mean, I did uh, 73. You, I just no. wanted to... Get, <laughs> yeah, I wanted Come to on. do one more. Milos don't want you doing more shows than him. Oh, you man. I literally I have, stayed I in the sport until I could beat them. Milo. Literally. All right. literally. And, and, Milos, and is, Milos went through your, all your shows, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like uh, 40 shows or some, right? So we were competing constantly. What is happening nowadays when you have all this guidance pro shows and nobody's competing? There was just so many pro cards back in the 90s, right? In the early 2000s, there was yep. not too many. Now there are hundreds and people are just passing on the competitions. I don't understand the concept. I'm Tony, glad. you just said you did 11 shows when you, I, I did every show. In three years, I did every show that was organized. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you brought it, this up because, you know, we, it, you guys followed the, uh, um, the, the shows this past weekend. Yeah. Puerto, right. Puerto Rico Pro. It's an Olympia qualification, and they had seven guys on stage. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Seven guys total. And I'll be honest. Bro, and, I'll be, and I'll be honest now. Let me know how many guys of the seven you know. 
one, well, two, I, I know actually, I don't, two, me, everyone, yeah, I do, because they follow, right? But uh, there was the seven guys at the Korea Pro too, right? So there was a set. Oh, it, it was only seven at the Korean Pro. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. Seven and and uh, <laughs> over there, there, there was like four Koreans, right? <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> I was, think that's kind of sad now that there's. I mean, like a, a, an Olympia qualification, and there's only seven guys on stage. Hassan Mustafa won. Then the guy from France, who I think looked unbelievable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Teal. Yeah. He, he can, yeah. He Teal. Was, he, he was charging. Yeah. He got second. Then then Jonas. Who the hell is this Jonas guy, man? That guy looked great too. Yeah, Chris Tassino trains him. Uh, probably none of us know how he qualified to be a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, right? Because uh, when Chris, uh, uh, you know, told me like, I look at his ribs, he's in, in great shape. Yeah, and I checked his Instagram, and uh, he was very impressive. But I don't know how he turned pro. You know, so Andrea Musli, we have we all know, of course, Max Charles. How can you not know? And, you know, Max is doing what we're doing. We're doing. He's competing in every show. Uh, unfortunately, he's always like a little bit here and there. Yeah, sometimes I, he nails it. Sometimes he doesn't. And uh, you know, but at least he's competing. But explain to me. I got the IBB Pro Card. I have maybe sponsors. I have these opportunities. There's the Pro Olympia qualifier, right? Yeah. And you're passing on it. Yeah. You can make the money. You know, you can get the prize money, you can get the recognition, you can get the exposure international, and they're passing. So here it comes. I mean, uh, Tony, you turned pro at the age of 36? Yeah, man. For the love of God, I didn't know that. <laughs> it was I really, um, once I got my peck fixed, so I tore my peck oh. in on August 1st, 1995. So it was, oh. a partial, it was a partial tear. And um, of course, you know, I didn't have insurance. So I, nobody wanted to touch it. And so I went four and a half years with a torn pec. And, you know, I'm basically, I definitely wasn't bodybuilding anymore, but I really stopped working out. I didn't even go in the gym the first three and a half years. Uh, I started personal training. And then I, um, this guy named Preston Barnes came in the gym one day and asked me to be his workout partner. And I was like laughing and he, you know, convinced me to do it. And we started training together. And so um, my physical therapist was also who I was working out with um, after, uh, after once I got my pec fixed, he's the one came and told me about the surgeon uh, that could fix it. And so uh, at the time I had insurance. <laughs> so I was like, let me go see this guy. And he said, oh, I can fix it, blah, blah, blah. And um, we did the surgery. And I remember he woke me up from anesthesia and I literally could feel it. And he was like, he was like, boy, I don't know what you made of. He said, but your tendon was in pristine condition. All I did was unravel it and suture it back and put a, a titanium clamp on it. He said, if you had it came to me when you first did it, I could have put it back like God made it. I was just like, damn. So anyway, he said, you got a lot of scar tissue, but he said, you know, because you're a bodybuilder, you could, you, you know, you could get your career back. And I literally, after that conversation, I wanted to be a bodybuilder again. And I just started on the path to do yeah, that that's, and, um, that's and, ended up, and ended up getting it. Yeah, In 2002, awesome. right? You, you won uh, yep. nationals. Yeah, and uh, thank God you beat uh, Dave Palumbo. He was he was second, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 got eighth place. I got eighth place the year before, and you know, with only thirteen <laughs> weeks of training, and I was like, you know, I said next year I'm gonna come back and win this shit. And to be honest with you, when I was standing up there, we first lined up and they called my number. I just kept standing there because I, you know, I've done that show like seven times, and they ain't never called my name first because I knew what that meant. I just stood there. So they wasn't calling me. They were just saying 151 or whatever my number was. And then finally, they was like, Tony, that's you. I was like, oh, shit. And then, <laughs> yeah. So I go out there. Me once. <laughs> so I was there by myself. My family, nobody was there. Because, you know, how many times did I did the Nationals and not win? Um, especially since the last time everybody went, I didn't even make the top five in 93 when Jay Cutler won. <laughs> I'm, just still, um, I'm still laughing because of Milos. <laughs> I mean, 96. But, but, <laughs> but, uh, you guys know, I mean, uh, let, let me say this out. The reason why I'm saying is just because the beautiful physique of Tony or, you know, uh, Dave's physique, direction that bodybuilding would go. <laughs> but this, this is why I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, of I'm... course, I have all the respect for... Uh, they being uh, so massive and conditioned and all, but uh, that's not uh, bodybuilding that you want to see on the stage. Right, right. right. You know, so. Well, yeah. Well, 
<laughs> he has some interesting routines. You got to give him that. Since we, since we start talking about this, let me ask you guys a question. Who was the most – no, who was the best bodybuilder to not turn pro that, that you can remember? I want to see if you guys – I'm going to write down the name. No, I'm going to tell you right now. Hold on, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I put the name down. I beg it big. So this I want to see if you guys think the same. You know it? Edgar uh, Fletcher. Yeah. Ag okay. Fletcher. Edgar Fletcher. Edgar Fletcher. But uh, uh, Matt, yeah, Matt, uh, Matt Vanderhall, right? That's that's the that's Matt, the for sure. Matt was false though, dog. He yeah. was that hard. Yeah, right? but still, I mean, like what now you would, you would win. Eddie uh, Fletcher, I think the same. This dude had a v I don't understand how did how did he not turn pro? You know, hey, you know what it was. When I, won, when I beat him, I beat him at the '93 USA. But I was scared that he was doing. I was like, I thought he was more dangerous than than uh, Francois in yeah. my eyes. And he actually he would have been third, but he cramped up uh, backstage and he wasn't able to continue. Uh, but yeah, every Fletcher was a man. Man, that dude, that crab yeah. he had was just out of this world. Man. It was yeah. crazy. It was he crazy. Had, he had that thick skin. Um, and, I, I, and he was competing. He was competing against guys with thin skin. You know what I'm saying? That's the other than that. I, who, I don't think. He, I don't think his skin was that thick. I think he was great. I yeah, think. I I'm awesome. saying as far as conditioning, because that's what they kept not hitting him on. He was uh. in condition for him. I think Everything his physique was, yeah, but then when you look at today's people that turned pro on the last oh, couple of years, funny. how compare this, when you look at Eddie Fletcher that did not turn pro, and then you look at some of the guys that turn pro nowadays, uh, come on. So, Edgar looks, oh, yeah. reminds me, what's your boy named um, Blessing? They had, the, they got the same kind of um, crazy number, Edgar was, to me, even better. Edgar was the his physique oh, yeah. was unmatched when it comes to proportions. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. I got an Edgar Fletcher story. Um, so Edgar came and stayed at my house for like two months. He was hooking me up. Like he was showing me all kinds of stuff. Stuff that I was just like, wow. And I remember he started dating a friend of mine. And um, so we was supposed to work out or whatever. He came and he sat down with me and he was like, hey man, uh, I ain't gonna be able to help you no more. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know, you're getting too close now. He said, it's almost like I'm helping you beat me. I ain't going to be able to do that. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and boom, that was it. And I was just like, well, damn. But it, it was like, it was like, it made me feel good. But I was like, damn, that's kind of fucked up. Because I was, I had become dependent. Like he was a, to me, he was a pro. You know what I'm saying? Like Edgar was a pro to me. He just was, how they used to tell us, wait, you got to wait your turn. Right. So when he didn't get it in 95, I don't, I don't know what happened to him after that. Um, you know, he just kind of was away. He, wasn't he, he was in the military, right? Yeah, was, yeah was, was, I thought he I thought was he was stationed in Germany. Germany. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. I thought that's why you brought it up because because of the German thing. No, yeah. because I remember seeing him in the magazines before I even even started about you know thinking about uh, turning pro, and I always yeah. I never understood how this guy never turned pro because he was. Yeah, uh, Dennis, uh, I agree with you, but you know that he was only second once. He was uh, third few times, but then he was forty to fifty years. Uh, and I remember very well, with, uh, as you said, he had, uh, Tony, yeah, I don't think that uh, uh, Adler had a thick skin because we, we, a few times, and Dennis remembers this, I'm sure, Chris, when he was in shape, there was thin skin, vascularity, all that stuff. But he would, you know, most of the times miss the peak. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not really, you know, because, because you can find the pictures of Edgar peeled with the onion skin. I remember okay. you know, the frontal biceps, crazy and shit like this. But... I, I was with Edgar in Dubai, 96, I think. And uh, I think this is the year uh, when uh, Sheik, you know, the, the, from Dubai, uh, offered him to, to stay there and train him and everything else. You know, so I think this is what got him out of the, the sport. You know, because he, he was offered major, major money. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, I have my, do I have my secret <laughs> surprise guest just walking in. I want you guys all to meet him. Yo! 
<laughs> hey, that's the dude that left me hanging last time, and he's still. And and you and listen, I'm gonna say this in front of everybody. Then I te- then he texts me, oh man, I feel bad, man. Thinks I got. Here's my number, man. For next time, this won't happen. I text him. I never got a reply from him. Kevin, Dennis, I'm so sorry, man. You know. Yeah. I, hey, look, I, I want to apologize right now in front of the whole world. Don't beat me up, brother. I apologize. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. We right. we definitely got to do. Right, we def- listen. We got to set you up for next week, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back uh, in Maryland. You know, so, uh, I'm leaving on Friday. So, what are you so guys I'm doing over home. there in Dubai and, and Iraq? Both of you now for the for the companies. We're in, we're in, <laughs> we're in Baghdad at yeah, the we're moment. In Baghdad right now. Yeah, is it still yeah, dangerous? So, so you, so if the lights go out and we go totally dark and black. We still here. Just keep talking. Do, 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 do the, the light goes yeah, is it, power's going out is periodically. It's still <laughs> da- it's still dangerous over there. Uh, well, we got. Well, we had. Uh, we we stayed here. We yeah, got, we, we had, had some good security. We had military, well, like security guys, uh, take us to the uh, hotel here where we are, and uh, it's probably about fifteen twenty. I'm out in front of the hotel. Yeah, they okay. got dogs out there that sniff around the car before you come in. All that stuff. Well, the whole thing about it is, I, I think the militia groups and stuff know that Chris is here, and they say he probably worth about ten million dollars, right? Don't be saying that. Right? No. Package up, right? They have a package deal with him, ass and my ass. And uh, you know, so yeah, but we got to be careful where we where we walk. Yeah, they you know? say don't go out there. Can't by go yourself. out. Can't do nothing, you know. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're in the heat of things, man. Not that. I know. I would be worried about them roadside bombs and stuff, and don't go to no markets and shit. No, yeah, no, no. People we over can't there. Go anywhere right now. They got people over there that still like to blow shit up. Oh yeah. Oh, How yeah. how's how's the supplement business over there though? Uh, it's great. It's yeah. great. Um, they have about seven hundred gyms here. Um. There's, you know, no nightclubs or nothing, but this is what they do. This is their life. You know, this is all they have yeah. is, is working out and everything. But the supplement, the supplement stuff is, is, is great. I mean, it's all they got, you know. Yeah. Um, it's good to see. It's, it's good real, to real see. Good. It's good to see you doing well, Kevin. I mean, I remember when it all started with the wrong sickness. He's killing it. He's killing it. Yeah. yeah and you know what? He's, he's, it, he's putting I mean, the work it in. Started on the, hey, Tony, how you doing, man? Great, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. And Milo's on the road. Milo's, hey. remember back in the day on the road, we were just talking about these oh, stories yeah, with uh, you, me, Chris, I mean, Sonny, and all of us out on the road, man. <laughs> it's like survival, you know? So, but Christ because Christ, of man. that, yeah, yes. because of but, that, but here, you know. Kevin, you, you didn't hear this also. I was asking a question, but we didn't get the answer. Chris competed 72 times. Tony got them competed 73 times. I'm 72. I, I thought that Chris and I were. I think were seventy-five losing. for me, though. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Kevin, you competed also sixty something, seventy times, right? Sixty-eight. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how, the how many wins there's... though? You got like a ton, shit ton of wins. Yeah. Twenty-some yeah. wins though. Yeah, you got them. But uh, <laughs> uh, I won one <laughs> show. You guys won so many anyway. But uh, why are Bodybuilders are not competing nowadays. They have a pro card, they have a shows, and they're just passing. You explain to me. I mean, I, I really don't have an answer. What does Kevin think? But do you think, do you think, well, do you think, let me, let me ask you real quick. Do you think it's because, is, are the promoters still sending the guys or the top 10 top, or, or, or helping guys get to the show? Are they still doing that or not doing that? I don't know about that. Well, I mean, back in the day, okay, I, I'm sure that all of us had our expenses paid for it. You know, so when you have the top draw, they, they pay hotel and flight and everything else. But still, there were so many others, you know, from Europe coming and paying their own flights and hotels because they want to compete. Mm-hmm. Now, shows are here in the U.S. and American guys are not competing. Like, what They're going to regret it. It's holding you at They're going to regret it. Yeah, well, you know, Milos, the, the thing that uh, these athletes need need to realize, and I think everybody on this call can agree with us, um, is that, you know, instead of taking it personal when you don't place or when you don't win a show, because placing or winning doesn't mean a damn thing, you got to take it as a business, and you have to take that opportunity if there's a show to go out and market yourself, 
use that contest that the NPC has or whatever to, to leverage that media, you know, that you're going to get so you can parallel into building your brand, you know. Uh, and that's one thing that I realized is that yeah, I didn't want to miss the Olympia, you know, and it, it, things, of course, I wanted to win. But it's like you in the long haul, you know, you win down the road because you use that you use that platform. There's there's a huge platform out there that Jimmy provides, that uh, IFBB provides for these athletes to be seen, for them to think business. You know, you got to think of it as a business instead of just the prize money and I'm getting their win. feelings hurt because they don't play so they don't get where they need to be. Well, when you're in shape, go out there and take advantage of it. And also, how about just getting better? You're getting better. You get smarter. You get better with each competition you do. You, you, you take something from that show, you, you use it for the next one. We didn't want to show, even though I was placed behind Kevin a lot, I wanted to beat him and I, I, I wasn't beat him, but I was like, man, I'm just going to just study this cat and just like see where I can get better. And he, he is actually helping me get better. I was talking about that earlier uh, on stage, even as yeah. we was competing against each other, he was giving me little tips on the stage and what to do and not to do. Yeah, I mean, it all came from our old school work ethics, you know, and that was handed down, you know, through through what bodybuilders was created, you know, all, all the way down from the era of, you know, just when I when I walk into Joita's office, it was just that era, and you wanted to be something special and great. He, I was telling Chris, he would take us to the meetings and fly us up there in Woodland Hills and sit down with us and show us how to pose and put that structure in place, you know, of and expecting us to do the guest posings. You know, I had to do eight guest posings a year, and I had to stay in shape. And before all that before the shows and we had to show up and do photo shoots before and after and just the whole presentation. Okay. I think nowadays that's what's got lost. They're just handed a title mm -hmm. with no responsibility. Yeah. When you, hey, when you mentioned, when you mentioned Joe Weather, I think that we should take a moment because all of us, we, we have some stories with him. Right. And yeah. after all, he is the father of bodybuilding. I was yesterday with uh, Jim science and, and a guy that uh, owns it work with with Joe and he told me all kinds of stories and he had a perfect accent right but uh uh Kevin and Chris right you you've seen uh uh Joe quite frequently right I, I saw him yes. maybe five six times but you guys did it uh, much more frequently I was up there I was up there at the office like three three times a, a week per week wow. you know I'm, I'm up there talking to the the, the writers making little stories and I was I was always going up there doing that because it was only right there in Woodland Hills I'd train and I'd go up there and spend the afternoon at, at Joe Reader's <laughs> office and sometime I could see him sometime he'd take me in the back showing you some stuff about posing and, and and making sure you hit the pose first because when you hit it and I mean, a lot of people waiting for the next person you know trying to get a little swag about it but you don't actually get get the uh, get the, the positive uh, blood flow in that muscle. If you hold it longer, it's going to fill with blood more and more and more, and it's going to get deeper cut, deeper cut, deeper cut. So as you as you try to wait and try to uh, wait for the guy because you think it's cool to hit it last and you know do some kind of antics with it, you don't get a chance to take advantage of the of the shot. Right, fully. right, yeah. That's what Dennis That's you, you told tip. Danny first. Thing yeah, I said there. I told him. He said, "Listen, you need to be the first one in the shot and the last one coming out." Yeah, and you yeah. got to make it look like it's nothing. You know, if you're in there shaking, if you're shaking, she said that that that's not working. And he, and 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 he took that approach and we did it like I said, we practiced posing so many times all day. Yeah. And it when showed. when he got on that stage, it showed. It literally showed. Because you know and how don't it is. you say Paul the last name with that. <laughs> oh, uh, that's no. my friend. <laughs> that's my friend. <laughs> I'm not talking about and Paul. It. I'm not talking about Paul, <laughs> but I, I want to say something real quick because of the uh, Joe Weider and, and, and Chris Comier being in the office three times. You know, when I signed with Joe, you know how that came about? I remember I got, okay. I got a... I you got won a, the Nationals? No, 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 no. I won the USA's. But that was that was after. Okay. I signed with Joe. You're the USA guy. Oh, okay. You're a national guy. Yeah. You're a national guy. 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 you I thought he was you yeah, he when he came in the goals. I know. Like Kevin, you Kevin, 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 you. Kevin already, like, know. Kevin already, knows. Kevin already knows. knows. Kevin already knows. Kevin already knows that he was my like, idol. shoulders were wide as shit. Kevin. I was like, damn. I was like, oh, shit. I'm getting ready to lose my contract. <laughs> <laughs> no.
no, no, no. <laughs> let, let me let me tell the story real quick. You look just like him. So uh, Peter McGuff has, says, "Listen, Joe, we don't want to invite you to come to to Woodland Hills." So I remember the next time I was in the it was ninety nine. I went to the to the office, you know, walked in there, and then. Uh, uh, Peter showed me the room, and there was Joe Weider. So I met Joe Weider. He was in there with a suit and, and some sneakers on. And then uh, he said, yeah, man, take, take your shirt off. You know? <laughs> so I took my shirt off. And then he asked me one question. He said, can you beat Chris Cormier? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He called Peter from that room. He called Peter and yes. said, get the contract and sign me. And was trying to, what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. What year was that? 99. Was it ni- ni- 99? 99. Oh, 1999. Well, 99 was Chris's best. Fuck. Yeah. I think. <laughs> he must have right? been. Carlos, remember. Yeah, no, but listen. No, this is I a beautiful. I went to Muscle Tech after that. I was just about to say, that's what it was. I went to Muscle Tech. He was probably yeah. trying to put a hit out on me. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> what it was. Yeah, he was sending a henchman out for me, man. <laughs> hey, but uh, not, Kevin. Not, not for a couple of years. Not for a couple Dennis got the minutes from. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 Ke- and Kevin knows that. Now I, you tell me. When I started bodybuilding, it was because of Kevin. Kevin was the one where I, yeah. I, and I, I, I saw myself when I saw Kevin. I said, yeah. I might be able to just pull this off just a little bit. Not yeah, a whole, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. You know, Kevin, I said everything about Kevin. I was like, man. It was Kevin. 90, 90 91? No, no, no. I, I, I didn't start lifting weights till 92. Well, that's what I saw him in '91 when he won the juniors. I know, but I know, but I watched this stuff. I, you know, I watched the magazine, so I can go back until until the nationals, you know. But I, I didn't start training until yeah. I was '92, and then I followed everything and I read back. I went back, you know. I got all the magazines, and then uh, you How know, you I had back? my hair done like Kevin and everything. I told him. I told Kevin one time. First time I met Kevin, the first time I literally met, saw him in person. Was at the Arnold back in 2000. That was the first time I got to see him basically, and I had to compete against him. It was, yeah. the, it was at the Arnold 2000. It was my first Arnold that I got an invite literally Wednesday before the Arnold. <laughs> 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 you remember Can that? Having the two cheesecakes in the room and wanting to eat it, and I just said, just hold on one more time. I had, the, I had the two big pieces of cheesecakes in the room for three days. From the Iron Man all the way to the to to Wednesday, and they got told me Wednesday we got a flight to the Arnold. Anyway, so I see Kevin for the first time. We didn't speak much, but I was just I was fucking in, I was in awe, you know. Now just Kevin, Chris Cormier, and Flex, yeah, you know. And then I happened. It was my first Arnold. I happened to place right behind you all, so I got fourth. I remember Flex got first, Chris got second, Kevin got third, and I got fourth. I was like, this is so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Brody, I, was, me, I was sitting dead center taking pictures. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, and the first let time me. I talked to Kevin, hold on one second, Chris. You could get it in a minute. Okay. All right. I saw him yeah. when I came out for to a Fullerton in Miller's gym for a photo shoot. And Kevin was there for a photo shoot too. So we Chris talked. Lund, yeah. And we talked. And that's when me and Kevin had the first conversation where he said, Yeah, man, I heard about you. And people saying, Yeah, there's somebody look like you and, and stuff. And that's where you gave me one of a, a huge tip. And an advice, because I asked you, you know, how do you do that? You do all this, because back then we still had the tours. How you do the tour mm-hmm. and you stay in shape and you're fucking almost better than at the, than at the main shows. And you told me, you said, listen, he, this is what he told me. When you fly somewhere, stay elevated. Don't sit around. Go fuck with people. Walk around the airplane. Yeah. And he said, yeah. that's what he told me. He said, because look at the flight attendants. They don't have no yeah. water issues when they get off the plane. That's true. And I remember no. I, I walked all the way to England. Do you remember that year? Yeah. That's yeah, the year yeah. I beat you, Chris. I walked from fucking LAX all the way to England. Milos? <laughs> Milos? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about this. I didn't know you was coming after me like that, too. You didn't let it be known. But I didn't know you was I didn't know Joe sent you from there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Dennis, that walking paid off, didn't it? Oh, oh yes, sure did. Dennis. Sure did. Dennis, we, we just we just spoke about this same thing about a couple of hours ago when he first got here. And I was like, we, we were talking to Brian. We were talking about uh, what he was doing. He said, because Kevin was giving me all his food. I was eating all Kevin's food on the plane, and he wasn't eating, and he was just standing up in the back of the plane. And I was like, man, look at this guy. He got a shirt, shirt 
halfway open, pants sagging down, abs all out, and he's just chilling back there eating nothing. I'm like, man, I'll eat your food, right? So I'm just eating his food. So every time he's giving me his, giving me I'm his like, food. Yeah, go ahead, carve up, carve up, carve up. Swim, like my brother, oh, swim. Sonny and Milos. Every time I saw them, Dennis, them, they would have like a bucket of rice. Milos, I don't know what you were doing. You had to be experimenting, you're experimenting like crazy. But every time I seen you, you were with Sonny. You guys were eating, carving up. <laughs> and doing all kinds of shit, man. It was a great, yeah, yeah, was a sure. great time. But dude, he's but, literally but, talking about standing hey. up and 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 getting rid of the water retention like that. And man, okay. I was Kevin I was, just like, was literally not sit. Kevin would literally from uh, over the ocean come and talk to all of us. Yeah, so that's what yeah. that's we that, talking right? about. That? Yeah, I was doing that on purpose. That's what he told but, me. He said, "Go Kevin, go okay. mess with people. Don't don't sit. Go mess with people. Walk around." Bro. Yeah, but I, Kevin, I, was, Kevin. I was in the bathroom and I would do like five rounds of poses every time. When you like flying. periodically when I would fly, I would go yeah. in the bathroom, in the biggest bathroom. I was just like, yeah. I'm squeezing out poses, squeezing <laughs> out poses, and I'm come back, you know, a little yeah. sweaty and stuff. But you I, come out, I mean, if I would have known that, I would have stood up there. Back so there and when, with, once you uh, get you to, once you get to the destination, when people check in, what do you do first? I'd go for a long walk. See, walk Kevin, like Kevin two, would go. Kevin would go straight to the bar. <laughs> straight to the bar instead of eating. Yeah. Instead of eating. Yeah, we yeah. talked about you, that. You we should have a martini contract. <sighs> martini was your thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. Um, <laughs> Kevin, martini? No, 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 martini. And, Je and Kevin, Milos, you know, like a lot of times the food. We would always get pissed off because the food wasn't the best in certain countries. You know, I mean, it would be like it would be brutal. We do three shows and there's no food, and there's the only food to eat is like shit food and everything. So I was like, you know what? Instead of me eating, I'd rather just go ahead and um, have something to drink to balance out my blood sugar levels. <laughs> and I'll be good to go. <laughs> Meanwhile, these guys going crazy, eating all kinds of shit, donuts, whatever they can get their hands on. Even Lee Priest, right? Lee Priest is on the tours too with us. But um, yeah, man, it was like survival of the fish. You know, we had to put Protan on in, in, in the airports, in the bathroom, in the airport. Sometimes we're standing outside, especially in Spain. Nobody's showing up for hours and hours and hours. It was hell, you know. Um, sometimes layover, six hours, nobody show up. So it's like survival. You learn a lot, man. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, Lee Priest was what, Hey, go ahead. Go when uh, what was that show when we 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 were like nine hours? You were there, Milo, too. Yeah, we were like in the in the airport nine Bang. hours, and we Bang. got like yeah. yeah, but but everyone's outside the uh, the auditorium when we actually showed up, and we didn't have a time. They said, "Don't pump up, don't do anything. Just yeah. on your go trunks on and go on the stage." And we're Just like, we're stage, like, okay. Right? But when we got, but before before the show started. Me and Kevin is out there posing with the fans. Like yeah, we were, yeah, yeah. We were right there in the we, had, we went out there uh, in the in the lobby area, and uh, it was a, a table between the both of us, and we got a shirt off. They actually put that in the magazine. Yeah. We're doing front double bicep. We're doing all kinds of posing. Hey, Milo, do, do you remember that one place where we went? It was like a meat house. And it was the yeah. slaughterhouse. The slaughterhouse. Yeah. Italy. Nine that was in Italy. <laughs> yeah. Italy. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and then remember that one place we had to sleep? It was like a barn out in a cow manure place. Do you remember that? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. It, it was like a horse stable or some shit, but it smelled like... It smelled like... <laughs> but that was that night in Italy. Yeah, that's the crazy. same guy that Chris didn't come for that show. But... Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris, isn't, isn't, this, is, isn't that the place where they had that gypsy camp outside? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> posing in the tent with all the flies and shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> Having a competition uh, in the middle of summertime. Of, that's you oh, mentioned that. Uh, uh, you mentioned are, Lee Priest, right? Lee Priest would not really go too many tours, but that 97, where he looked great, we started in the first show, and the second show, he looked good, right? And then he started eating. But the last show in uh, in uh, uh, <laughs> Russia, of course, uh, yeah, then he started eating. <laughs> <laughs> he was like close to that KFC commercial, like I said, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Kevin, Kevin, I, I asked Chris, and Chris, first thing he uh, he said about Joe Weider, 
he learned something from him. I learned, uh, I would say, did you learn something from Joe? Of course. Uh, I've learned not to take it personal, uh, your placings, because I remember asking Joe, well, why is it that, you know, none of us can never win the Mr. Olympia and you always keep giving it to the same guy? <laughs> His answer to me at the time, you know, was, you know, um, if I take the, my top four guys, that, you know, that, that finished second, third, fourth, and I shuffle you around, or if I put you in first and put Sean, whatever it is, then I'm still going to make the same amount of money. Nothing's going to change. But if I keep, <laughs> he was like, but if I keep uh, Dorian where, where he's at, he opens up a whole complete different market. That was the first thing. So, Oh, he like, said you know that what? to you? Yeah, he, he was right. And he was right, too. Um, if I had a one, Flex or whatever, Sean or whatever, and, or Chris or whoever, it still would have been the co corporation wouldn't have made any more money. Hmm. But Dorian Yates opened up another whole avenue. So I, at that point, I said, you know what? It's business. And um, I really didn't take it personal because he says, hey, you know, just just look at it as, as, as a business. And that's when I decided, you know what? If I'm not going to win the Miss Olympia, I'm going to try to win everything else I can to uh, market myself the best way I can. And at that point, I didn't take it personal. And then he yeah. said, it's not that you're not good enough to, to be Mr. Olympia. You certainly are good enough. And I respect what you did. And then he put me on, a, I think it was a, a 62nd edition of uh, Muscle and Fitness. That's when he decided to put me on the cover, you know. Hmm. It, the the wow. Olympia is a brand. And um, the, the, the long reigning champion is like, you know, a stock. You buy Apple stock at $5 and then it goes up to $1,000 or whatever. And that's what it's yeah. like. It takes years for that to develop. And once I learned that, when I, re when I retired and, you know, I'm going through my cleansing or whatever, I realized that mm. all of us, if you qualify for the Olympia, usually it's 15 guys. Every once in a while, it would be 20. So in other words, mm. top 20 guys, top 15 guys in the, in the entire world. So you're 80 to 95% Mr. Olympia when you show up. That last percentage is the trophy and the check and the title. And, you know, as a brand, and, and he was right, because when you look at it from that perspective, you're building the brand. So as the front runner, all you got to do is, either repeat your last year or get a little bit better. And so there was always questionable years where, you know, Sean should have won or Kevin, you should have won. But yeah, like he said, it would have, it would have tarnished the brand in his mind, but in yeah. reality, because if you look at real sports in reality, it would have grew the brand. It's just at the time there was no internet. There was, no, you know, but now in that same aspect of people compete more, you develop your brand and you also build the entire brand of the industry. We competed so much because of our passion and because that's how we actually made our money, going on tours, selling pictures, guest posing. So in guest posing, you get more guest posing if you're in shape. Well, the way that they start spreading out these shows and you get guest poses in between as a bodybuilder, just like if you was a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, you're a bodybuilder every day, all year long. So I, when you start t talking, I made up this riddle. Name me something that you can get better at by not doing it. And that's nothing. So if you're going to be a better bodybuilder, you got to stay in the game. That whole doing one show off season, on season. Yeah. As a pro, you got to be on season all the time. I was making so much money guest posing because I stayed in shape all the time. So people would call me mm -hmm. such and such didn't show up or whatever. And I would get, I mean, I remember one time I flew to Germany, landed guest pose and the next morning flew back home, made like 12 grand because of the situation. And I was like, you got to, got to, how Will Smith say, you got to stay ready to, so you don't have to get ready. Kevin, you know, Kevin, how, Kevin, how did you bring all the money back when you won this damn tour, this whole tour? <laughs> I one handed time? it out. I, I handed five, five, five to each one of the guys. I had maybe 5,000 tucked down bomber balls, <laughs> another five of each shoe. <laughs> and I was passing it out, bro. I was just, yeah. And I told the boys, help me bring it on through, you know, because you're only allowed to bring like 10, 10 grand back. Ten K. Kevin, Kevin was on a roll one time and he was winning. I think he won like five, four or five shows in a row. Yeah. It was six. 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 But, but. Then Ronnie so, no, wait, no. But this, this is the story. First of all, he had it all in his back, all in his uh, uh, fanny pack. Yeah. And, it, and, he, left, left and, he, right and he left, he left it in a taxi. What? With his passport and all his money in that fanny pack. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. 
He's like, yeah. Was it was it gone? Off, I had to oh, off. and then he had to leave, he had to leave the tour a little bit to go go fix his uh, stuff. And I was like, I was like, see, see you later, buddy. Have, <laughs> see you when I see you. <laughs> so was it? That is that is the same thing, right? I did something yeah. similar, but I didn't. It wasn't prize money. It was it was. Yeah. I flew in from California, but did, was the money gone, Kevin, or did you get it back? It was gone. My passport was gone. Everything same here. Gone. I, same here. And, and these guys were celebrating. Oh yeah, I was happy. Nobody helped me. I didn't have no money. I didn't, hey. have, I didn't have no clothes. I feel I you. I would have helped you, bro. Kevin, trust I me. The beach, they you know, any, by any means necessary at that time. I bro. feel you because hey. the same shit happened to me flying in from California to New York on a red eye flight for the new uh, for the wow. uh, for the Nationals yeah. back in two thousand. I just got paid. I had seven thousand dollars cash in my pocket, and back then there were still hard copy tickets, airline tickets. There was no electronic tickets like today. Mm -hmm. So I had my my little wallet. There was everything in there. I flew in a red eye flight. So I got to New York at five six five thirty in the morning. I get into the airport. I get a cab, and you know what? They have this this guys that give you the cards where you see what cab driver you have. So when I leave my yeah. I leave my pouch in the back seat, and I woke up in, at the hotel, and I took my shit, took my paid him out of my my funny pack where I had change, and left all the money everything in the back seat. So I run later. Oh my God. I think I don't know. I sit in the hotel. I'm waiting for you. Remember K Swole? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for him because he wanted to show me where the hotel is where I'm staying. So we walking down the New York block, and all of a sudden it got to me. I said, "Fuck my wallet." So I turned around. And I started running. I didn't even tell K Swole why. K Swole looked at me. He started running with me. I'm running. I'm running back to the hotel. I'm going straight to the counter. I said, "Listen, where's my wallet? It was there." She said, there's no wallet. It was right there. I didn't even know where I left what, it. What, was, what country was that? Who that was there? New York. Oh, you were in New York. Well, yeah. my ass was all the way overseas. All overseas. I, I think I was, in, go to, to the I was in Hungary or some bullshit. Yeah, yeah but keep in mind, before. but keep in mind, I lived in Thailand. So I had, I lost all my shit over here. I go to the police oh, station. Oh, my God. I go to the police station and I told the police station, here's the, the slip from the taxi. So we knew what cab driver it was. But nobody could reach him. Wow. You know what the guy at the police station told me? So how did you get back home? I, I'll tell you in a second. The guy, the police guy told me, ah, that's New York. That shit's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. So I had to, I was literally John Doe for the whole weekend. I had to sign autographs at the fucking nationals. I was fucked up. I had no money. I had no credit cards, no, no passport, no ticket, nothing. You called me like to, to get you the ID from the bank. On remember? Monday morning, I had to go to the uh, downtown in Manhattan somewhere to get my passport, and I had to somehow prove who I am. They asked me for my birth certificate. Who the fuck travels with a birth certificate? I have my passport in the bag. The passport's gone. Here's the police report. D, you got to prove. Same thing happened to me. You got to prove. Same so. thing happened to me. All my, all my, pass, <sighs> my passport, all my money, everything, all my plane tickets, everything these guys are going to catch a plane the next morning i'm fucking sitting there and like you got you got to get to the uh <laughs> embassy that was like two hours away i had to get on a train they had no money <laughs> nobody wouldn't give me no money i didn't have shit i didn't win my thing yet no i'm all guided down like shit i'm fucking tripping no food hungry as a motherfucker they're like you ass gotta get on the train and get to the embassy two hours away i'm like how the fuck i'm gonna do that i got no money i got nothing <laughs> These no one would help me out. So look, and I had to show up there with some kind of ID to prove who I was. You right. know what I did? Flex magazine. I, out, I stole the magazine. That's what I did. From the freaking newsstand. I stole it. Then I went to the police department and I said, this is who I am and I got to get there. Yeah. I did the and same. The guys gave me a freaking, bought me a little ticket to put my ass on a train. Because oh, they, boy. I could, you know. Prove who I was. They filled out a paper, and I told them I had to pull out a police statement saying all my shit got stolen. I left it in a taxi because I was rushing. I got, you know, and then that, that that was it. They gave me a 30-day visa to get the hell out of there. Yeah. And I, that See, <laughs> yeah. I'm, dudes, I I'm, was, in, I'm in New York, and I'm, I'm going there man. early in the <laughs> morning. I'm going there early in the morning because they open up at 7. I was there at 5. Make sure I be there That's first because my flight was Sunday night. I mean, Monday night. <laughs> So I get there, and I'll sit there all day. And I said, yeah, how do you have to prove who you are? How can I prove it? So I called Milos. I said, I need a signature card from the Bank of America. Contract, Weida. Weida mm. Kotnik, signature. 
I had a, so much shit, and I sit there from five in the morning until five at night. I was the last one still in there. I was the last one still in there. Everybody else was gone. People that don't even speak English got their shit and they left. So I'm in there, all of a sudden this lady says, oh, excuse me, I get up there, I thought I'm getting my passport. She said, here's a number, call this number tomorrow. We can't give you your passport. No way. We can't give you your passport because you own child support. Oh, get out of here. I was like, what? What child? <laughs> what child? <laughs> I, and, and she said, I don't know, you have to call this number. I can't give you the passport. I said, listen, please do me a favor. Please check that again. She checked it again, thank God, and she realized that she fucked up. It wasn't me. So she gave me my passport. Now I'm fucking oh. rushing. I'm rushing to the airport, JFK. I got to go back to Thailand, right? They said, where's the ticket? I said, listen, I, here's my police report. I lost, everything got stolen. She said, I'm sorry, we can't help you. I said, my name must be in the computer. I got the ticket. They made me buy a new ticket. Wow. Well, look, guys, I got to get ready to go. Dennis, good seeing you, man. All right, brother. Good, good seeing you, my I man. Make it. Apologize, Chris. Milos, I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you too, man. We're going to have to arrange you, for you to come on next next time, yes, Kevin. We'll do it, man. All right, brother. Take All right, care. Be safe. Thanks for coming. All right. Brother. All right, man. All right. All right. Hey, hey, Dennis, did interview. you learn yeah. something from Joe? I'll come up there. Did I learn something from Joe? Did I learn something from Joe? Kevin, have a good one. All right. Thanks, guys. Later. See you, my brother. What did I oh, learn? Yeah, did I, I learn something from Joe? Jo yeah, yeah, for real, man. That was a good one. That was a good one. Did I, yeah, I, I guess I did. I guess I did. <laughs> I guess I did. But there, there were so many things that I, 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 I it's always, Joe was, a, he was a fan of bodybuilding. You could tell. Oh, hell. Yeah. You know, and I, and I only heard from others, you know, how he is. And then when I finally met him just by himself, you know, that's like exactly what everybody was saying is true. You know, he's, he made me pose and, you know, he, he just loved, you know, seeing guys pose, you know. Yeah. So can, and, and can I tell you, can I tell you for Peter McGuff, because you said that Peter was talking, right? Right. Did Peter told you about Sergio Oliva Sr. and Joe Wheeler? Do no. you know the story? No, no. Okay. So apparently Sergio was trying to get a contract from him. Every time he comes in, uh, Joe would uh, jump through the window and, and leave the office and never be there. And then you can never reach him, you know, it's like, <laughs> so now I saw somebody in 94, right? He came to California after the Olympia, right? Mm -hmm. He was trying to reach uh, Joe and it was always not in office, not in town, not in country, not here, not there. But then Joe wanted to see me and I had a schedule, whatever, Monday, eh? So I, I bring Nasser with me. <laughs> and this is how... Uh, Nasser actually finally talked to him and he got, like, I remember there was a $40,000 contract, but that, that enabled he, him to stay. But, uh, you know, here's uh, Joe's face when he saw me coming inside <laughs> with Nasser. It was one of those, like, oh, shit. But uh, most importantly, because we're all competitors, right? And we all peak for the shows. I'll tell you what I learned from Joe that was actually shocking. 94, I think I was in my best condition as far as dryness, right? So super lean, strided, dry, I couldn't be fucking happier. I placed 13th at Olympia, right? I go to the European tour, you know how it is, you know, after the European tour and you eat and then a couple of weeks later I have a photo shoot and I go to the photo shoot and Joe was there and then as soon as he saw me and I'm 25 pounds heavier, right? Mm. My loss. Why didn't you look like that at Olympia? You would be a top six, right? And I'm like, you know, fucking old man, like, what the fuck, yeah? <laughs> and then he goes, you know, he goes, okay, come, come, come. And he takes this Polaroid shot and take, uh, he had a, a, on the, the table like, with, with, the, with the lights and he had a, a stage shot. And I'm looking at the, God damn. I mean, here, right? I'm not as dry, but you can't really see that much of a difference, but 25 pounds of fullness, you know, created a completely different illusion. And uh, this was like rude awakening for me, like, hold on, because we would always go just get dry, get ripped, get strided, get this, get that, right? But then there is always a little bit more balance to it. That day, I mean, what I've seen, and he was explaining everything to a T. And just to tell you, Puerto Rico placed fifth at the Olympia that year, right? And I was 13. And then when I went to European Grand Prix Tour, 
I said, fuck it. I just ate up. I got fuller. And I was beating Porter in every show in, in Europe. There was uh, Italy and uh, Germany and uh, England and everything, right? So when you prepare guys for a contest, you know, like, what do you do? Just, okay, let's go bone dry. Da, da, da. So that brings me to this uh, Hassan uh, this, this uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you... All of you think. What do you think? Uh, I think I think the, that was the best. That, that, that was the best condition he ever had, but he was flat. So I think he's if flat, he would have been, I think if he would have had a few, a, I don't know, maybe a few more carbs, he would have been even more impressive. I think. Yeah, he, he was. He was a little. He got way under. Got they got way too too carried away with being dice. He was, you know, nice striations. He was good about a week or two ago. Yeah, better. But I think but, I, th I think know. he's scared because it's it's about to control his his abs his midsection. I think if he eats more than he maybe did, then he has issues with his midsections. And that's that's what I'm thinking. So they so probably what, played it safe. What, yeah, Tony, do you still what, follow? What? Oh yeah, I'm here. Uh, I mean, but do you follow the sports? Did oh you yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, I I went through a lot of stuff, bro. I was I was more than passionate about bodybuilding i think i became addicted and then almost obsessed and possessed i mean to do that many shows you gotta understand i did that many shows by by 2006 i had only done 11 shows so from 2006 to 2016 is when i did the other 60 shows you know what i'm saying so you know when you get that far gone you gotta you gotta be careful so now i, I follow it because i'm you know i'm still a fan so what so also, what did you see so what did you see this weekend in puerto rico well, I, what I believe is because he's such freaky muscle-wise, right? Mm. And, and I, whoever's coaching him got him in condition. So once he got in condition full, they figure, wait, well, hey, man, when you dry out, you're going to be the shit and not realizing, you know. Dennis, you remember in 13, we worked together? Mm -hmm. I flattened out. If I hadn't flattened out, that would have been a different outcome. You know what I'm saying? Like the difference between bringing it to the stage is where is your water when you know when it's time when in that 15 20 30 minutes that you're on stage and most people go too far because you really can't control it i i started doing in 08 right i was i was um i think i was like 274 on friday night well when i woke up on saturday morning i was 261 i was like what the i'm like what the hell happened so i went i went and got a colonic that morning a really slow colonic i gained 11 pounds laying on the table and then I ate all day and I was like 280 by the night show. And that's why everybody was like, my God, what did you do? If you had to saw me like, you know, 15 hours earlier, you'd have, I was so flat, it was ridiculous. I, I, I did that colonic and it pulled the water in the muscle. I didn't drink nothing. And um, and I ended up peaking for the first time in my whole career on stage. So you're saying you peaked because of the colonic? I'm saying because I, I was able to put the water in the muscle where it was supposed to be. So how, you know, but how is the water going into the muscle when you get water blown into your ass? Well, because your colon is very highly absorbable. That's where you absorb all your everything. Uh. And so you don't get, it wasn't a regular. I, 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 I just don't want to, uh, people, no, you go. No, you I, go. I don't, I'm just we, telling you we how gonna, it happened. We're going to have and to. <laughs> you have to be in really, you have to be in crazy condition, number one. And I was doing colonics every, every week anyway. It I wasn't like, that wasn't a, a strict, I didn't, that wasn't like changing it up at the last second. Shit, now you want to, you want to be. If I try to drink water, I'm going to spill over. Mm. There's no way I can drink back my fullness. It was like, I lost like 13, 12 or 13 pounds from the prejudging to that morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm going to be a string bean on stage. I had already had that experience before. And so I was like, well, how can I rehydrate? And that's what I did. It only, it, you know, it, Again, it's not going to be something that somebody can do as a as a way to prep. It was yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking that we're going to be in Vegas. You know, I'm going to open up the little colonics clinic right in front of the Planet Hollywood for all the athletes to now do a colonics before the show. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, think about it. So I was able to be 306 pounds with a 31 and a half inch waist, and the only reason because I didn't have anything in. But that was of me. but that was because you were Tony Freeman, okay? Uh -huh. And there's. There was only one Tony Freeman. It's not like everybody I get, I can. I get that. Yeah, I get that. But what I'm saying is, my waist should have been 35, but because I didn't have anything in there when it was, you know, at, at, when it was time, because I, I, I was, I used to eat 15 cups of veggies every day. Mm. 
know what I'm saying? Like it was a it was a whole regimen. It wasn't no there we accident. Go. It wasn't no accident. I was able to um, figure out what worked for me because I kept missing and kept missing. You know, when I when I realized that I was competing against myself, so in other words, you know, if I'm not better than I was before, then I'm going to be dinged for that. Um, that's why I started doing so many shows because I'm just like, well, I got to make my money some kind of way. And I wanted to be in shape and I wanted to, to, to just prove that, you know, I am, I am better than where I'm placing because um, just because of my physique and it, the, the politics and the business of the sport, um, you know, you have to combat with that. Okay, Chris, turn, turn, turn to the side, please. There we go. But now that we have social media the way it is right mm. now, um, so when we were, when you guys were doing it, like especially Milos and Chris, it was a commodity. You had to wait three months to see the results in the magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So people, they're just numb. Be, you know, remember how much money you could just make at FIBO and stuff like that, selling pictures? Because they ain't seen you. Now you got right. people who's, you know, posting every single day, every single workout, every single meal. So it's like the, the it's like a value of a stock. Like I say, it's been diluted. Yeah. By the time, so time they get to see you, they're already tired of looking at you. <laughs> they know what you're going to look like. They're, you know, it's so yeah. crazy. Um, it's, it's crazy how it is right now. And so people think they're, you know, I got a million followers or two million followers, but you can't even place in the top five for real. Hmm. And you have you had shows where people was was doing better because they had a bigger following. And I'm just, you know, it's it's totally different than um, when you guys were doing it. And I was kind of in that transition to what it is now to what it used to be. I was just trying to represent the classic physique because it just went away. Every, it was Glad like you brought that up. Glad you brought up classic physique because you, you Tony, and, and I never said you would make classic because you will never make it weight wise. But when you look at classic physique today, who, who does Im who impresses you the most when 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 you look at those guys? Because it's 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 totally different from bodybuilding when you compare those guys. But when you look well, at classic, who do you think? And I'm no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go ahead. Question. I want to answer your question, um, but. To me, classic is a look, and I know they got to have their divisions because, like I say, it's a business. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I was always classic, even at 275, 280. Yeah. It's because of the, the shoulder to waist ratio. Now, who do I like? I mean, Chris Bumps, I mean, the, the, the top 10 are really good. I just think they're being suppressed. I think if you if they were allowed to come in, you know, with a certain look, because they're all in that, you know, the frame wise. You know, in other words, don't go too round, too crazy. But I'm saying to be able to, whatever the weight is, like us. So in you think words, they should up the weight? You think they should up it, the weight I limit? Mean, they just set, just, I think they should set a standard of some sort. I, and I might take a little thinking, but I think they should set a standard. And if you fit, you have to fit the standard um, because you want to keep them Dude, separate. That's, that's that's what I think is a, is have a standard look. And if they they go too heavy, okay. You're not in the standard. We're gonna go with a guy that has the look that we're looking for, because I think it's hard to get a good bead on some of these guys' potential because they got to make a weight class, and they only give them 24 hours to to uh, regain it, some it, fluid it puts, or to fill out. It puts the athlete in a very compromised position. Uh, it's the same thing in the open when when Dorian was was raining. Everybody said, "Well, you got to be 300." So everybody shifted in that direction. And people like Milos and Sean and all that you either you either say, "No, I'm not going to go there," or you end up kind of ruining your physique because you're trying to chase somebody who's not like you. You know. So the yeah. thing about setting a standard, it would be, I, I don't know what it exactly would be, but it could be shoulder to waist to quad. Back in the day, there used to be a book called The Art of Symmetry. And it described a classic symmetrical physique. So you could start there and then you can kind of modernize it for today. But now these guys would be training for a certain shoulder to waist ratio, squads, the calf ratio. And you would you would see it on stage when they were too heavy. You could see it. You would be able to see it because we don't know how much they weigh right now. You diet down, train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. 
but you can tell when somebody's too heavy or too light. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, here's the question. But why do you think not, they even, not even have it? But why did they bring a classic uh, physique in the first place? Business. And plus, yeah. I left. So now they could do it. So when I left, they was like, oh, now we can do it. He's gone. No, yeah, they're yeah, 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 waiting for you to retire, Sony. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, I kept saying, I, the reason why, I, you know, the, my last Olympia, I refused to follow the freak show. I kept saying, I'm ruining myself trying to, to, main, to chase this when I'm. You know, I, I want my shirts are 36, 37. I got long ass arms. I mean, you know, it's just I can't compete with that. I can't. I'm standing next to Dexter. I remember all the many times, you know, we stood next to each other. And I mean, it's almost the same physique. Dexter looked thicker because he was thicker because he's five inches shorter than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, there's nothing I can do about that. So having the look, you could come up with some kind of standard that the athletes would have to follow. And eventually, it might take a couple of years to get it there, but you would. Just that's what pros do. That's what we all do. Yeah, Dennis, you, you are you are a little bit more into the whole uh, uh, industry and uh, and the federation. So you know, why did they bring a classic physique? What was the uh, uh, main reason? I don't know. You you don't think that because uh, as uh, as Tony said first, Dorian brought the. Mass, and mm -hmm. that's why I said, "Thank God, Tony, you beat Dave Palumbo." Because if Dave Palumbo was the poster child, what uh, we want to see on the stage, you know, it wouldn't be good. I thought that uh, they wanted to bring beauty back to bodybuilding, more shapely, aesthetic physiques. So this is how I took it, and I was thinking Serge Nubre, uh, Frank Zane, right? You know, think of these uh, classic physiques from the past. Yeah, but you, you, know, so but you remember what you, we said before? It's a business. Yeah, it's, it's a business also, but uh, just now, it's good business. I mean, what I heard is that man's physique is a great, great business and bikini because so many girls and guys <coughs> look like that and they bring so many people in, mm -hmm. okay? But what do we really want to see? Bodybuilding. We wanted to see beauty. Bigger legs. But then from, uh, yeah, but from the beauty, aesthetic physiques, we went into the just mass monsters, right? So now they wanted to balance it and they, you know, bring back the classic. So initially, I thought that they're going to go with the classic bodybuilding. They, I even thought it was a, a classic bodybuilding category. There, so is, there, Teddy, there is one, but it's in the other federation. Yeah, uh, but 2019, uh, you know, I, I do remember very well because Brian, right, Chris, Brian was competing and uh, uh, George Peterson. And for me, uh, they should have beat Chris. At that time, Chris was not that good, 2019, right? And so like, well, in any bodybuilding show, you know, how can he be? There was uh, front double biceps, back double biceps. Uh, Chris at that time didn't have an arms or a back. And those two guys had a phenomenal, right? So if those are the two poses, the other one is uh, abs, shut and uh, side chest. These guys beat Chris fair and square 2019. But then Chris Acida was saying, oh, no, you know, but they're looking at the structure and you know, so it's different kind of judging, which I didn't understand at that time. Well, 2020, uh, and I made that comment, in, a, in which universe would Chris in bodybuilding show beat Brian and, and George in 2019? You know, I, I think he couldn't. He just didn't have the tools. 2020, Chris came looking freaky. It's like, again, night and day difference. And then he explained that structure, you know, was really phenomenal. So now I say, okay, I know they, they want to mold classic physique into this, into structure, as Tony says, you know, V-taper, X-frame, you know, <laughs> you were known the most of this uh, X-frame. But beauty, beautiful. But now, as Tony said, you have to, and then Chris, you have a Brion squeaking into the weight limit and looking perfect, five, six, seven, eight pounds heavier, and then you have to just make that uh, weight cut, and then you have a less than 24 hours, and then you screwed up in this 24 hours. It's not the same physique. So I sent a message to actually Jim Mannion like, a few months ago. I said, Jim, let's talk about this uh, you know, height and weight ratio. And then uh, Jim had Tyler call me, and I said, okay. So I don't want to uh, you know, the, 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 uh, argue anything, but just give you, you know, a different perspective. First, if these guys have to make the class and they are always 
you know, just made in the class, which means for the next five, ten years, they cannot improve, right? It should be some dynamics, okay, that uh, every so many years you can reevaluate and maybe structure differently. Because, like, okay, Logan Franklin, right? He was already one pound under. But he needs to look 10 pounds heavier, right? So how can he, you know, challenge somebody like Chris that has uh, more room? I think that classic is classic regardless of the of, of the, the weight. weight. Yeah. Yeah. But just to give them a little bit more freedom. At exactly. Five, That's pounds, what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think so. Because uh, let's say, you know, just, you, you all guys watch UFC and, you know, those guys have to squeak into the goddamn, uh, <laughs> they lose 15, 20 pounds, just like uh, uh, Tony, what do you say? You lost 16 pounds overnight or something? Yeah. You know, it can be healthy, okay? And it's not the best way to go. So, classic physique. I hope that also Tyler is uh, listening because we had that uh, conversation before. Uh, for the sake of all the athletes, they look perfectly, perfectly classic. It would be beautiful to see them on stage, but they're five, six, seven, eight pounds heavier. And it's always, it's always going to be like this or some solution you know, can be made. So, I'm all for it, you know, like reevaluate. I don't know how, who can be that formula. I mean, really, uh, what is based on? There is no uh, science behind it, right? It's uh, somebody that just threw the number. You know, I don't see, <laughs> you know, uh, how book, can you come up with a formula? But it should be uh, extended. Right. You know, the give them five, ten pounds more. The book Art of Symmetry was an old book. I don't even know if it exists anymore. It described what, it's, what it should look like. And if you look at Frank Zane and Serge Dubre, I mean, it almost was fit the description. You would have to change it now because we have different, you know, machines and stuff that you can develop muscles, you know, that you weren't able to develop back in the days. You can just do all kinds of crazy stuff. So I think you could come up with a standard, but it would just take some testing. You wouldn't just be able to come up with it automatically. But if you just started somewhere and just fine tune it as an athlete, you would you would conform to that situation if you want to win. And if you if you go outside the the standard, you it would be visually obvious, which would automatically put you in the open division. It wouldn't it wouldn't like say you suck. It would just say you know your shoulder to waist ratio. And I'm just using that because that's what's in my mind. It doesn't. I mean, even if you wanted, like you gotta. I mean, again, this is all about presenting an image in a body. And what we also have to do is think about the athlete's health. Think about it. You're losing 10, 15 pounds. You're de dehydrating, rehydrating. That's, you know, that's you. You want these athletes to last, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And the only way you're going to do that is if you stay healthy. So, in other words, come up with the thing. You even remember, remember the, the gold gym logo, the, you know, the cutout or whatever. Even yeah. if you had to do something yeah. like that and had them stand in the cutout. Oh, nope. You know what I'm saying? That's a little far fetched, but I'm saying some kind of way to create a standard. The athletes would conform. Think about how many people can do a vacuum now. Hmm. How many vacuums are you seeing now? How are they? How is that possible? Because they're practicing it. They, their people are doing vacuum exercises. Now you got people. You be like, well, how the hell he got a vacuum now? Mm -hmm. Because you, anything that that's what we do. We alter our bodies. When when cap delts became the thing, round cap delts. Now everybody got them. Even the women. You remember that? Remember how freaky when Kevin and Flex and them had to run? You know what I mean? Now everybody got it. So the sport is going to conform to the standard that you set. That's why everybody wanted strided glutes. Even though it was ru ruining a lot of people's physique, trying to push it that far, you, your legs is... That's why people's hips are jacked up, because you're doing all that cardio trying to get your glutes to strike. Now after you retire, you got to get your hip replaced. Mm. That's, we have to start looking. Now that we have people like us who <laughs> been there, done that, Miles. We, we can reach back and say, you know, let's help these people avoid these things, keep them in the realm. And when we watch football every Sunday, we're fans, right? Short for fanatic. We know everything about the sport. How can you follow a sport for 20 years and be sitting in the audience confused because there's no set way that it's supposed to go? We used to think first call out was, was it. And now it's, now they do it uh, last man standing, which, you know, I, re I recommended that in it's so much more interesting watching the Olympia now because they judge all the way. They get rid of the, the, the guys that aren't winning and you end up with just the guys that's left. Mm. Oh, it's pretty cool. 
I got a few fan questions that I want to throw out there for you guys. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start with the first one. Um, how do you recognize that your body hit a plateau naturally, and do you need PEDs to fix it? <laughs> okay, I, I can go first because I have this constantly. Natural, oh, Milos, you know, your training style is not for naturals. You know, it's too overtraining. It's, uh, it's not, hey, why do you think that uh, all of us, all four of us, they were talking, we started training and we started doing uh, uh, steroids right away. We all did it naturally mm -hmm. as far as it went, right? And then there is a time that we say, okay, now you want to do, go, go next level. How long does that take? I mean, it took me seven years. I don't know how many, uh, how much uh, you guys train without it. But but uh, uh, you know when you hit a plateau, when body is not changing, no matter what uh, you do, right? You know, for extended period of time, if if you look the same for a whole year, uh, this is usually a sign. Okay, now maybe you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Maybe you're doing it wrong, or add pharmacological edge. But yeah, that's I think, how I would answer. I think, you know, the five to seven years, I mean, hell, Ronnie started when he was 31. I don't know how old he was when he started lifting, but he was 31 when he started. Yeah, he was in his teens, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so he trained teen. So I feel like if you, now no one has the patience now. Like I say, the internet has ruined that. You know, the ability to, to, get, to get things and all that. So yeah. you got people starting their career on gear. Before, like they, they, before they go to the gym. So I'm I'm gonna do a show as my intro to bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't been lifting. First, uh, I'm starting off fresh. I got you know you're doing a cycle and a diet and a coach and all that, and you've never lifted in your life. Hmm. So I've been personal training for six months, and now I'm competing, and now I want to be Mr. Olympia. And I'm just like, yeah. you know, like I say, the path that we all took, you know, it was work. And I'm not saying people don't work, but you know, the, the technology has. It how long did everything you, easier? How long were you natural, Tommy? Till I was 26. So um, I started at 21, and, and I, I was 162 pounds. And I and when I, I would start dating this girl who's a nurse, and so my first time doing it, I got the real deal from the doctor's office, and I gained 54 pounds, you know, in nine weeks. It was in all the stretch marks that I have on my body. I got them in from two from uh, I had already been bodybuilding for four years. I had I placed uh, fourth at the junior USA in the um, the AAU, and then I saw those guys and I was just like, they was like, in order to be a, a, a good bodybuilder, you got to have 28 inch legs, and you got to, you know. So I went back home and I measured my legs. My legs was 25, <laughs> 25 and a half, I think, and they had grown from like 22 when I started. I was skinny as hell. And so I remember the first thing I did was um, some Debo. I did, you know, I didn't know what it was or whatever. And it gave me a headache, so I stopped. And then when I met the nurse, she showed me how to take it. And I started training with some real intensity. And like I said, I gained 54 pounds. And so I was, and I, I don't know if we could talk about it, but I did, I was doing, I did one cc of test, one cc of DECA, and one anadrol a day. That was my cycle. That's all I did. And I, I just exploded. I had the same so cycle. I, like, I don't, I had the same I cycle. No when I, I don't want if, if, yeah. if more, you know, I didn't have the mentality to take more. I had I the same a, cycle, Tony. Same huh? cycle. I had the same cycle. Did the same cycle without the anadrol. That was it. Yeah. One, well, anadrol once, was real back can, in the day. I, um, I got it from the doctor's office. I never forget it. And it was, I mean, you know, I, I went from squatting 135 <laughs> to, I mean, I used to be able to squat, you know, five, six plates for sets of 10. I didn't know. How I got my legs was 10 sets of 10. One plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, five plate, six plate, five plate, four plate, three plate, two plate, one plate. That was my leg workout. Mm. <laughs> that's how, And that's how I got my quads. That's how I, and, and I couldn't hardly bench anything. And I took the same principle um, for upper body. I literally had to slow down on my leg training for like two years for my upper body to catch up. Mm. I have another question here from TC Rush. He said, if you guys could go back knowing what you know today, what would be the main thing you would change, whether it's nutrition, cardio, cycle, or training? Chris, yeah. I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> um, I think, um, I mean, but I was around a lot of the uh, good people early on. I was around Robert Robinson before I was even 20 years old. 
and he had an old school. So I never got into, you know, taking too much or anything like that. But I was, uh, I feel like if. Um, if you could change one thing from I, back in the days, what would it be? Don't have to be PEDs. It could be, I don't know, maybe some of your parties. I don't know. See how you are? I'm trying to help I you think, out to come up with something. If I could go back. No, no, no I think. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. No, no. I mean, if you got the thought. I was going to say, uh, just learning uh, early on about uh, my food, um, probably a bit more. Probably not, I mean, like when I first started competing, I did a show, 17, I did a show, 18. But then I, I did like seven shows in a row just because I wanted to get up there and just learn about the sport. I didn't care where I placed. I was just trying to get good at my craft and um, taking uh, taking my time learning my craft. But doing seven shows as an 18-year-old wasn't, wasn't really uh, heard of at the time. But I think I would have done myself more justice if I wasn't doing 10 shows a year. Um, doing 10 shows a year, but Joe told me if I'm if I'm qualified for the Olympia, I need to do it. If I'm if I'm in, if I'm uh, on the list to be invited to Arnold Classic, I need to do it. And then it just makes sense to do those four or five shows on the tour after that. Mm. But I, I just think I competed too much in order to improve more. If I took a whole year off just to peak, just to do the Olympia. I think I would have been able to peak at the Olympia a lot better and a lot easier. But I think it was just burning me out uh, year after year doing 10 Arnold Classics and 10 uh, Mr. Olympias. All right. Tony, what about you? Um, just really, uh, like the day I tore my pec, um, if I could have that that day back, you know, to and because it was, it was um, kind of like a freak accident. But I remember the mindset that I had and I felt invincible. And if I had had the, just a little bit more patience, because you gotta understand that was the first time I ever did growth and insulin or anything like that. And it was happening so fast that I felt like, you know, I would like no limits. And I've realized now that the human body, you know, you have, you have these thresholds. And if you are patient and, and take the time to learn what works for you instead of you know, like I tore my peg doing a Dorian Yates workout. Totally different physique. I had no business em trying to emulate him, but he was Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, in other words, take the time. If you if you know someone who 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 is um, resonates with you and that looks you know that knows about what you're trying to accomplish, then get a mentor. And in the beginning, you know, I had people helping me, but but I really just once I once I start feeling myself and understood, man, I can manipulate my body with ease all i got to do is put in the work at that point i should have realized or wish i could have realized that this is a business and longevity was the case because i you know i missed my five years of prime from 29 to 36 i missed that time and i feel like if, if um i had had a little more patience and um just understanding what i know now then i mean there's, there's no telling what i would have been able to done with my physique right. um, just because tearing your pec just limits what you can do upper body mass wise so milos yeah okay uh pad wise pads uh i regret sintol sintol is the worst thing uh, i was tempted to do it and i did it and i want everybody that is listening don't go the, with the shortcuts is it's just not gonna do anything good it's uh, uh it changed my anatomy in my my tissue muscle tissue became fibrotic and necrotic it's just like ridiculous mm -hmm. you know so of course i was tempted back in the day 97 right oh yeah if you just have a little bit bigger arms and some other guys are doing it so monkey see monkey do usually end up being a monkey right <laughs> you know don't do it it has to make a sense as far as any other regrets yeah um uh, a good question which i, I also want to hear your your answer uh dennis as far as training Nutrition, supplementation, everything else, right? Uh, nutrition, uh, I would not change a thing. I still believe in my methods. I like high protein, frequent small meals, and then manipulating carbs and fats accordingly. You know, your caloric requirement, okay, this is what I need at the time I need. I need carbs for a workout. 
I don't need them elsewhere, this kind of thing. I, I stick with that. Training-wise, and I'm not even, uh, I was not, never as strong as you guys, uh, Chris and, and uh, Dennis. I mean, I've seen you lift weights and uh, anything pushing. I mean, I always say that. I've never seen anybody that can just load, except maybe Kevin Leveroni, put anything on a Smith machine, on the a, on a bench. You push as many plates as uh, I would put on, five, six plates, doesn't matter. I was never that strong. But as uh, Tony is saying now that he tore the pack at the moment when he had a different mindset, I was with you in uh, in uh, Thailand, I remember, and uh, uh, 2001, uh, 2001 to 2002. And uh, I did the supplements already, started getting stronger, right? Well, I was there and I was going to make that uh, you know comeback. And I remember going with uh, Sin, your wife, to this card reader, you know, the, the clairvoyant. I was and there the, with you. Yes. And uh, Sin was translating, right? And that one card always keep coming back, like health card related to your business, right? right. And I, I didn't even think about it could be an injury, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really the like freaking thing. Uh, I came back to uh, California maybe second, third workout that I had. First, I remember that day, the mirror from my wall just crashed. It was like, you know, mirror crashed. Like, oh, gee. But I had a one hour to do the workout, and I felt strong. Just hack, like hack squat. Said. Hack squat. Yeah. So I would do, like uh, like Tony was doing, I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, even six and a half plate squats, right? So whatever I finished with squat, I would go on a hack squat. That's uh, my initial weight. So I did six plates, eight plates, ten plates. And I just felt like, oh, my quad. I thought it was my VMO, my dialysis was so pumped. But no, it was that middle part of the tendon when you touch right above the knee. That was, you know, warning me, but I didn't feel it. And it just exploded. Mm. But uh, the reason I'm saying this, okay, it's not that accident. It's just like going all out. I know that, Chris, you for sure you have a bunch of injuries. When we were younger, right, you just you have that mentality, man, if you do something, I'll try to outdo you. Or next workout, I have to do more and more and more. Muscles can maybe handle, but yes. tendons and, and ligaments can't. And eventually, it's not a matter of time. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I remember very well when my, when my father was saying, hey, if I try to wait until you're 40 or 50. Mm. I mean... I know exactly. After 40, I still didn't really feel it, but after 50, God damn. I mean, really, you, you can feel every joint. So if I know, if I knew then what I know now, what would I change? I would train even lighter. Mm -hmm. I would I would make weight harder and heavier by doing it slower and squeezing harder and shit like this. But, you know, it's always impressive to say I, I would lie if I, if I say that I was not super impressed with you, Dennis, pushing this uh, shoulder presses and, and incline presses. How can you not be, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I can be like this. But, but this is, you know, then there comes a point that, uh, okay, now, now what? Next workout next year, you're going to have to go harder and heavier. Mm. Something's going to break. So my message to the guy that, that uh, asked the question, as far as, Pets, all four of us here never really abused it. We used probably half amount of what is nowadays, mm -hmm. fairly to say. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. Nutritionally, yeah, we ate clean, right? There was, you know, we need to improve. We need to improve. I know, Dennis, you know that you were in the minute, in the <laughs> gram. I mean, you didn't want to have a 75 76 or 75 grams of oats or something, right? Uh, super pre precise because we were uh, directed to, to our goal. Right. Training, Dennis, you train twice a day, right? Mm -hmm. I train twice a day. Nowadays, all I'm hearing is overtraining, overtraining, overtraining. You can't recover. You can't. Re Come on, man. I mean, what is your profession? Your profession is your profession bodybuilder. Oh, what are you supposed to do? Train and eat and sleep? You know, so yeah. I'm gonna just less is more. That's the notion. Less is more, yeah. right? Yeah. And I have to say, yeah, you have to take off the hat for Dorian Yates, what he has accomplished 
with your infrequent intense workouts. Yeah. But that's that's a Russian roulette. And we know I tore my quad. Tony, uh, you know, tore his pack. Right. I, I'm sure that you guys have your even though. Dennis, I don't know if you have any injuries. <laughs> I have no injuries. I tore my, but didn't completely tore my tore, tore my biceps tendon. But that's from wiping my ass. That nothing to do with the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, the but it's story. true. It's true, Tony. Okay. It's true. So, uh, what what would you change now that uh, uh, I, I I I repeat myself every time, and we talked about this last time with with Jay Cutler on the podcast. Uh, I, I would change. I would chase Ronnie in size. That was that was for me something. If I could turn back the time, I would, I would stick to my, to my gun. To, I stick to what I had and just you know, work on quality instead of trying to get too big. Because I did, and this is nobody's fault but my own. I think I got too big and I ruined my physique. And I and I, I can jump in because I was also guilty of it. Because initially when we start working, I mean, let's discuss this. I mean, when you touched insulin right at that time you exploded like and i remember very well you sent me that uh, there was no uh text message or email look what you did to me i mean you exploded with 40 pounds and uh, your chest shoulders i mean it, it looked ridiculous mm. so at the time okay 2000 uh, this is the time ronnie coleman showed up 99 looking like uh you know uh, out of this world, Chris 99. Oh man, that's my favorite uh, version of you, Chris. And arguably, I mean, you could have contested uh, Ronnie for a title. You know, it's uh, uh, I already said that I think that you should beat Flex at that, that show. But size mattered as much as I didn't want to, you know, say it. 99, I also blew myself up. I didn't like it. As Tony said, you ruin your physique. I hate it. Just like you. Now, when you could, I would not change the size. I wish I stayed. But Mr. So, Olympia is the poster child. You want to mold yourself into it. And you have that genetics I've never really seen. I mean, I mentioned this on your Instagram. That most muscular inside chest when you turn around. People, 100% for sure, think this is Photoshop. And there's no way the right. human can look like that, right? Was- and I said that the pictures don't even do your justice because I've seen it. And I was blown away. I mean, I've seen Lee Haney at his best, right? I've seen Dorian Rania. And Dennis, when you would be that fully loaded, uh, you know, pumped in a, in a training, it was just like jaw dropping, like, what the fuck? So I was guilty of being your coach and maybe encouraging, ooh, because I could never look like that, right? But that was shocking. And I do remember now when you said 2000 Arnold Classic, you were fourth. You look great. For 2001 Arnold Classic, right? We tried to, I didn't think, tried to blow you up so you can match uh, Ronnie and, and Chris, right? For me, uh, you had that element of wow, which now I just want to touch the subject of Hassan. Hassan lost that wow factor, right? Mm-hmm. He came conditioned condition right but if this is the first time we saw Hassan compete if if that uh, New York 2019 whatever when he plays sports or something if that if first time he showed up like this I don't think he would be noticed he would be right. yeah nice yeah, yeah. condition all that stuff structure not the best no V taper you know all this stuff. but you left that mark and, and Chris you competed against uh, Dennis I'm sure that you, because you always analyzed all the physiques, you were concerned about Dennis with this fucking crazy fullness and size. I mean, that picture be, behind you, uh, the the logo, the Menace logo, I mean, yeah. how can you ignore that? I mean, you're one of the few, I remember that picture, you, uh, Troy Abs and Ronnie, and that was Ronnie at his, you matched Ronnie in size upstairs. I mean, it was like... Chris, were you concerned about Dennis's size? Well, I w- that wasn't my, I mean, I didn't have that type of physique. Mine was more like more shapely and going with the, the definition and the separation and uh, the way I would pose my physique. That was my strength. So 
I always stay with my strength. I was always Is that a yes or no, Chris? Yeah. That's a no. I didn't have a big crab like that. So that's a I no. I didn't have a big crab like that. So, so you, yeah, were, I you were not I concerned? Mean, I, didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to hit a crab next to you, but I was going to do some <laughs> other shit. But, yeah, yeah. But, no, <laughs> but what I'm saying, Chris, Chris I, I know you play to your strengths, but uh, you knew that uh, shape-wise, Dennis could not uh, outshape you and beat you in that department. But then when you see him blown up, exploding full, wouldn't that be concerning? Like, oh, shit, he can outpower me. And you maybe lost before to the guys that outpower you, even though you outshaped them. Mm. Well, you know and, what I mean? Right. So 93, 92, 90, and I didn't, 94, and I never, that, that Pandora's box was open when we saw Dorian in that. He, he literally, I, I literally was sitting on the stage off to the side. He literally looked like concrete. And he was so full and strided and and so all and you know, and plus he was five eleven or whatever. So now all those X frames, Sean, Kevin, Chris, Milos. Because That's... now, okay, well, we never really seen that kind of mass and that kind of conditioning. So it gave the judges something else to look at besides beautiful physiques. And we was like, well, we like the freak too. So everybody started trying to duplicate that when really, if, if the standard had been that, that type of shape, Dorian would have conformed to that with his condition. And then I think the sport would have been, I mean, you had, so Paul Dillette was a perfect example where he had that crazy size and condition. Structurally, I don't know what was kept him from being able to pose, but can you imagine Paul posing like Flex or Chris? You know what I'm saying? With that, it, it was just stupid. And so the, the key, the thing is your waist or your midsection, you know, we're eating, you have, in order to look like that, you got to eat what, six to, to, to 10 times a day? I know I did. And so you start putting all that food volume and then you add the G and the I, which now everything's growing. But if a standard had been X frame or whatever, then everybody would have conformed to that and it would have been mm -hmm. some kind of governor because you realize, just like you said, look what you did to me. I, I went from 242 to 285 in like nine weeks, and I, I went from 12% to 4%. That's a mind fuck. That's like you're you're like modulating and, you know, turning the dials. I remember meeting Milos. I met you in, in 90, but I, I came out there after I turned pro, and you gave me this, this um, philosophy of insulin and um, – <laughs> super physiological, blah, 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 blah. So I ran out the door. I was like, ain't no way in hell I'm about to do that. Because I had already experienced what three units was doing. Three units, I gained 54, uh, 42 pounds. With three so, units of G8? I mean, three units of insulin? insulin? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not what, exaggerating. Did, what, did you do three units every fucking 30 seconds, a minute? No, I, I did three units uh, every other meal or something like that. Oh, so, so but it's not like three nine, units, so it's not three. I ended up doing like nine total maybe for the day. Okay. Something like that. So, But I'm saying, like, when they start talking about, you know, 10 grams of carbs per unit and all this type of stuff, and you start doing the numbers and the math, that shit is real. That's like literally, yeah. I don't know if you, if you train intensely enough, you're creating hyperplasia. You're not just volumizing the muscle that you have. You're you creating some more shit that wasn't there. That's where all this, this where it looked like they morph. Yeah, you, you look like you but, morph. You go but, from but, one physique to another. But back then, because she said three units a couple of times a day, and yet, and and I believe that because that's all it takes when you when when, when your body is hyper responsive. Because yeah, Milos that, knows because back then there was a different dose of insulin than you 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 advise people today. I mean, this is way more today. I mean, like I would have yeah. never ever use that much but right. you know but th that's that's i guess how it evolved milos can you elaborate do on you, that yeah I mean, do you think listen. people are using it year round well first of all are people using it year round i think milos is the best to answer that because i mean he, he's yeah listen and i have these journals and i tell you guys of course i'm the bad guy that brought the insulin to the bodybuilding and many people point fingers and they say oh yeah you screwed up the bodybuilding look Insulin is anabolic agent, okay? Steroids are anabolic agent. Do we take them? Yes, we do, because you want to anabolize. You want to wanna increase protein synthesis. You want to hypertrophy with one size. So drug-free, okay? 
Olympia level, you want to do every little advantage that makes sense. So initially, when I you know learned about the insulin and early sedation, I, I said, this makes perfect sense. So as I was timing it for me, okay, uh, every day that I train, would it be more productive with insulin or without it? If that's the question, I have to say it would be more productive with insulin. So how can I deny you know that thing? You know, for me, I say, okay, I don't want to grow as much. I don't. I just have to know how to control it and how to master it. And that was you know my thing. So even though Tony, yeah, what I told you, I I, I gave you what I was doing. You know, it's uh, I never lied about. Uh, as you guys know, I published that. Uh, article in uh, in uh, Muscle Media 2000 about insulin. That was my article. I just signed as a, a professional ex. I couldn't because I had a Joe Weider contract, so I couldn't you know mention my name. But I said it, and uh, it looks like yeah, Dennis, that you maybe regret even doing it because it really uh, blew you up. And uh, what I heard is that you don't even advise your guys to take insulin, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because you just, uh, you had a bad experience, so you don't think it's I'm, I'm not saying, no, no, I'm not saying I had a bad experience. Oh. Uh, what I'm saying is, is, says I, and this has not, nothing to do with the insulin now that I'm trying uh -huh. to get too big. That has something to do because I was eating like an eating machine. Yeah. And that, I'm not, I'm not blaming the insulin, Milos. Don't, don't get me wrong. Okay. I'm not blaming oh. the insulin for me fucking up my physique. That's just me personally trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You didn't fuck up your physique, Hold man. On. Come on. So, so Dennis, <laughs> yeah. why, why, why did you do that? Because you could. No, I did Why? Yeah, why is you... You kept doing it because you could do it. I, you know I know, I, mean? I know, but before I... Before we start... Hold on. Before we start, we have this vision of what we want to look like. Mm -hmm. But when you get the combination of, of elements and you put them all together... Then it starts happening. Yeah. Now you have now we have experience. So these yeah. guys that are are coming up that were, are where we were, we already know what's going to happen if you do this, yeah. this, 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 and this. But when I started training, my vision was not what I what it was at the end. My vision was more like a Kevin Flex, yeah. be more like a symmetrical guy. But Dude, then when Dorian I but no 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 it, 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 that, that was Dorian was still there. But then when I turned pro, Ronnie was in there. So yeah. now. Now you're a pro, and now you want to get as good as you get, as, as good as it gets, because you're chasing the champ, and that was Ronnie, and and, and yeah. trying to chase him for size, which was, I think, it was a mistake. So full a fuller Ronnie ninety eight is just like same thing happened to Phil, literally unbeatable mm -hmm. until his. I I didn't get to say this earlier when we were talking about Joe Weider. My first weekend as a pro, so I turned pro, and then the following week I went to to Venice. Hung out with Ronnie. Ronnie said, come on, go eat lunch with me. We're going to Joe's office. I'm like, cool. So we go over to the office. They're not there. Ronnie calls me and says, we're going to his house. Follow me. <laughs> uh, we go to Joe Weeder's house. And we're sitting there eating. He brings out lox and bagels and, and salad. And so Ronnie's sitting there reading the, the Muscle and Fitness magazine or Flex magazine. And Ronnie was like, you ain't got no chicken? <laughs> <laughs> and so Joe sent his, his uh, servant out, butler out to get some chicken, comes back. And we're sitting there eating and talking about, they're talking about the, the last year's Mr. Olympia the, when Jay didn't do it in 2002 or whatever. Yeah. And um, so, Ron, so Ronnie's reading the magazine and Joe's sitting there and he, he reaches and taps Ronnie on the belly and said, you ain't going to let this come between you and that, uh, that Sandow, are you? And Ronnie was like, no. In that moment, I realized you know, just like Dorian, just like Ronnie, those they're freaks of nature. And so I was like, I can't chase Ronnie. If I try to chase Ronnie, I'm going to do what Ronnie did and do what Dorian did. So I learned from the people before me, because in other words, I got to see what happens when you push the envelope till there's no more envelope. You can't reel that shit back in. You know what I'm saying? And I remember- what, what, But why did you say I'm not chasing it? What, what did you see happen? No, I seen I'm, Ronnie in two thousand in in ninety eight with that tiny ass waist. I under, I understand that, but he was still winning in two thousand and four and five. With his waist, but but Joe on two thousand two. I'm just what I'm trying to tell you. He patted him on the stomach and said, "You ain't gonna let this belly come between." That's when his that's when his belly start. And then the next year they sick uh, Jay and Gunther on him. 
So then Johnny, Ronnie just dropped the hammer and came back at two ninety something. And I, I, I remember I was in, I, I didn't, I hadn't turned pro. I was pro, but I hadn't uh, qualified for the O. And I watched that show, you know, cause I was there the year before when it was, it was kind of a contest, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever. And then that, Ronnie came up that year and it was just like. 2003. Nobody yeah. Nobody wanted to go. Everybody was just like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but I, I, I always think, you know, I, I, if, if listen, if the guy who was winning the Olympia had a tiny waist, I would have probably never chased anybody else. But at that's that, what I'm trying to say. But like I said, there was, there was Dorian before who didn't Nasser. have the small waist. Nasser yeah. actually had a small waist for his frame, I would say. He did. He did. But there was Dorian who was winning the Olympia who didn't have a small waist. And then there was Ronnie who yeah. his waist expanded a little bit at the end, but they were still winning. So that's why I wasn't scared to go overboard. Right. Yeah. Well, you just said, I just keep changed. making my shoulders bigger. Yeah. I remember everybody's mentality is like, <laughs> yeah. well, I just keep making my shoulders bigger. Yeah, I wasn't scared to go overboard because I figured, you know, listen, what are you going to say? My waist is big? Listen, if I'm winning, I don't care. Yeah, it started going, it started, you know, bodybuilding mm. was an art form. When we all picked it up, it was still an art form. I, I mean, always I, sat there and watched videos. Or even when I looked on stage and I yep. saw guys like you, Tony, or, or Chris, or even me, was, how the fuck are these guys standing there with the abs flat and tight and my shit? I'm holding my shit together. I'm about to pass out. I was like, how is that possible? Remember, <laughs> remember, when, remember when Phil turned, you know, he started, he came on, the, he, he won his first show at like 213, 215 or something like that. that he was, literally was the perfect compact physique, another 20 pounds, maybe. So let's just say 230. He would have been unbeatable with that same conditioning with 15 more pounds. And I told him at the press conference, you know, cause I, they were trying to pit me and him against each other. And because of my experience in the sport watching, you know, like I said, I watched everyone chase Dorian and Ronnie, everyone. And I was, I'm on my way down, and I seen him come out. I was just like, wow, that is exactly Not what it was. I mean. Huh? <laughs> and I told him, I said, I Yeah, said, but you, Chris, you know. Me. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I didn't chase him because, you know, everybody tried to chase, but not everybody yeah. can get that big. And when somebody yeah. can't get that big at the end, they say, yeah, because I'm not trying. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I could. No? Yeah, but well, Chris, then if you, you could, that's why I was encouraging you to, to get that big because you're one of the few that can do it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But, but uh, okay, uh, the, the question here. Uh, uh, Tony, I you was, but, but Dennis... Chris, you're breaking you're break, up. You're breaking up. <laughs> 93, you saw Dorian, okay? Mm -hmm. And I have to say this. Uh, Dorian doesn't have a single mandatory pose that he's weak. He is the master of mandatory poses, mm -hmm. okay? He showed up, like you said, massive and granite hard, okay? So he just left the judges with, oh, uh, we don't know what to do. And nope. then they, they call it. I still think that was, uh, you say, Pandora box was open. If they went with the uh, flex that year, we would have the sport just like you beat uh, Dave Palumbo, right? So mm -hmm. we want a beauty, we want aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Once the, the new champ with the new look is crowned, we all have to chase him, right? And then that's where it came, all this uh, wrong direction. You mentioned Dorian, but after Dorian is Ronnie, after Ronnie is Jay, right? It's like uh, yeah, too you know, many yeah. physiques. Yeah. yeah. But Ronnie himself, when I ask him, what is your best ever? He says 98 Olympia. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, you said then it's 2001 Arnold Classic. But yeah, you know, this kind of look, we all love Ronnie. Why? Because the super small waist. But then 2003, I mean, that was unseen. I think that 2003, that size, nobody, nobody was that muscular. Maybe somebody is bigger, but nobody has like just sheer muscle mass. But my question was, would you give Dorian a 93 if you were a judge? Yeah. You would. I'm, you, yeah. you guys said I'm a flex wheeler. That was that's my dude. And so yeah. being at the show, so first of all, um Dorian beat Kevin the year before. And, yeah. and Kevin looked insane. He just was brand new rookie. So the yeah. next year, no one was expecting Dorian to come out like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Dorian was number one. He came out first. So we're yeah. all sitting there. We're excited waiting on Kevin, even though Dorian was the reigning Miss. I mean, we're waiting on Flex, even though Dorian was the reigning Miss Olympia. You know, I figure I figure Flex had just won the Arnold looking really crazy. Stupid. And I'm like, yeah. if Flex come out there looking like that, I don't give a damn. He's going to be Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. 
And and I know now why he didn't win, but the thing is, he came out, Dorian came out first. And so when you saw that conditioning and that size, and he had a small waist and stomach was flat, and he was stupid striated, and then he turned around, and it was just like, so if less, unless um, Flex comes in like he did in 93, I don't see how he could do it. And then he made Flex look soft, even though Flex was in shape, but he was, the first thing I said, we were all sitting there. It was like six or seven of us on the side. He walked out and we all just looked at each other like, he, and we all said at the same time, he gonna die. I mean, <laughs> it was Sorry. that crazy. It was yeah. so stupid. And yeah. so that oh. level of size and, and uh, conditioning was unmatched. So now everybody had to step their game up. They didn't have to get bigger. They just needed to step their game up. You know, most of the time we overdo it one way or the other, trying to be too full or too shredded or too dry or whatever. And that's why I said as a sport, you know, just like I say, when we watch football every day, we know when somebody's offsides or out of bounds. So in other words, some kind of standard. So in other words, the athletes aren't doing it. It's said you guys, you guys step into this realm and act accordingly. And again, it would take time because like now it's a business and it's been going this way for so long. But bodybuild, every sport does bodybuilding to get better at their sport. How are we the last on the totem pole? Mm. It's because the way that we present it to the world, and that's neither good or, nor bad. It just, it just is. Well, listen, guys, it was Olympia awesome. Never, no one wants to look like you. you. You've done the sport a disservice. <laughs> right. To get to True. the point where I don't want to look like that. That's too much <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, Guys, I have to – I'm, I'm really sorry, but we got to wrap this up because we got – we. Two hours, that's all we yeah. got for right now. So I appreciate you guys. Huh? Starving. You're breaking up, Chris. You got that Iraqi connection right now. That's I not working. I apologize about my, my ins and outs. I'm yeah. in Baghdad. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Baghdad, yeah. man. That's okay. You guys, make sure you get home Baghdad. safe. Tony, man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming. I, I have a question for you. Though. I have a, one more question for you. How much yeah. do you weigh now? I'm 232. Oh, okay. So that's a that's a healthy. So when y'all saw when they saw me at the Olympia, I was like 205. I, I had got COVID. You had you were 205. Where when? I went down to 202. I oh. lost 38 pounds in 26 days. Oh damn, damn. It no, but insane, this is bro. this is a healthy weight for you, man. It looks good. 100. All right, 100. Milos. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you guys. Oh, and uh, we will do this again next week. So, okay, Tony, and 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 in the future, man, if you if you have something, you know, I I would love to bring you back. You know? Oh, anytime you want. All right, brother. I will. Let, let a few weeks go by and call me back. I will. Like, I will. I will. I will. Yeah. We'll, find a, we'll find a nice topic. We'll talk about it. Okay, guys? Chris, get back home safe. Milos, thank right. you. Tony, right. you have Thanks. a good one. Take care, bro. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.